Okay, I think after a lot of effort, we finally should be live. Um, Bogdan, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you well. And maybe can you risk showing yourself? I think the bandwidth should be enough. It's just uh, I was being silly with some settings. Uh, we <laughs> may have some viewers, but you have to have to check. Okay, first of all, somebody confirm that you can actually see us. Because I... Um, this is the first time I'm trying this software thing and uh, it may not necessarily work. With the, uh, do we have viewers now? There were two in the chat, I believe. It was Melvin and Ruben from uh, from Hungary. All right, I, th I, th I think this is happening. No, or is it? <laughs> <laughs> Any feedback from chat, please? Uh, but let's say if you... Okay, uh, it says that we have three viewers now. Uh, I'm just gonna... But I really want to make sure this is happening. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, uh, th this is happening. Uh, so, um, actually, actually, Bogdan, can, can you keep your eye on the chat a little bit more now? Um, because I can miss things, new software and everything. Um, so the actual stream is supposed to start in three minutes. I think let's introduce ourselves and you especially properly after three minutes. Um, yes. Now maybe let's have uh, just a quick chat if anybody's... Um, if we have anybody over here at all, how do I, I just wonder how do I monitor that? <laughs> Actually, I know how. I'm just going to do this. Nice. Hi, lucky gods. I assume it's either Vladimir or Vladimir. Uh, there's two Vladimirs managing this 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 channel. Alrighty. So I know what we can start doing. Let's just start looking for Lithuanian and Spanish players. Mm -hmm. And this is the Lithuanian team captain. And I might I might want to watch his game first. Actually, never mind. Now it's 6.50, sort of. We can start the stream properly. Anyway, I wish good things to you who is watching this, to uh, everybody who's here. Uh, so with me is a special guest today from Romania, uh, um, Bogdan Kurkan, uh, f who, whom you also might know as Game Over on Board Game Arena. You also might know him as... Um, I think a national champion of Romania, either one or multiple times, you got to correct me on this one, and also the vice champion of the Might Sports Olympiad on 2020, and most importantly, contender for MVP uh, in um, the World Champ in World Team Carcassonne Championships at 2021. Definitely one of the uh, key players of Romania and the captain of Romanian team. Um, yeah, so it was, was that accurate? Was that a good introduction of you? Yeah, thanks, Alexei, uh, for the introduction. Actually, not very accurate. I, I was no, I, I was never a national champion, but uh, I was very close several times. <laughs> so I played several uh, sem uh, semifinals. I lost, uh, yeah, a lot of times against my brother or uh, Garapa <laughs> in the national championships against uh, Michna. So never national champion, but very close to that. I participated in Essen this year, uh, that's true, uh, via the MSO, not via the nat national championship, so yeah. But I'm a Carcassonne fan, so <laughs> this, this is uh, definitely true. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, thank you for having me this evening. Nice, all right, so the game start in, in 10 minutes, and uh, let me just tell about the backgrounds, the, uh, background of this match a little bit. So the reason why I, I chose to stream Lithuania, Spain is because I have a special relationship with Lithuania. As some of um, um, our viewers will know, 
uh, that in the World Championships we had a combined national team of Latvia and Lithuania. Um, and uh, our team captain was Batal Albotov with the screen name Muzacella. We also had a few Lithuanian and Russian players. Uh, but now, um, due to the rule change, we split up and created two national teams. So there is even a chance that we might have to play against each other in the championships. But some of these players are still um, know very well, and I'm going to sort of root for Lithuania a little bit. Although as a commentator, I'm, I'm supposed to be a little bit impartial. Um, but I also know that we have many Spanish-speaking viewers. Uh, so if you want to root for Spain, that's absolutely fine. That's way we can just balance each other out. So if you look at the lineups over here, um, I, th there are several. Um, there's actually two matchups that come to mind. So from Lithuania, um, I know Ludice Ludicelis probably would be an interesting game to watch. He's um, the team captain and also one of, one of our strongest players. Also contender for MVP. Uh, he had a twelve a perfect record up until the quarterfinal match when we um, lost to Russia. So I think he won twelve games in a row uh, in the World Team Carcassonne Championships. Um, then also. The second matchup that would be interesting would be Machinele and Oscaridis, and that's mostly because of Spanish play. Actually, I have I've played a few games of Oscaridis on on Board Game Arena. Seemed to be quite a strong player. I think with um, a rating above 500, and um, Machinele was also approaching 500, so it could be a relatively close fight with some edge for the Spanish champion. As for as for the players on tables two, three, four, so let's monitor them indeed. But um. I don't know them very well. So Bogdan, maybe, uh, do, do you know much about the Spanish players? Uh, not actually, but I uh, did uh, some research before the match. So yeah, they really have some strong players, uh, around 400 or 500. So they don't have uh, very close to master. For example, Luda Celis was at some point there, but uh, they seem to be strong. Yeah, so they have some old players uh, since the last championships also, so some experience in online uh, championships. So, yeah, they seem to be stronger, or at least on paper, than the new Lithuanian team <laughs> uh, with the new players. So Lithuania also has some new players uh, uh, in the... Yeah, in the first five, for example, uh, Labanaktis, if I pronounce it correctly, he played very few games in uh, Board Game Arena, of course, very successful so far, <laughs> but a uh, few games there, so, yeah. From the lineup, I see Ludeselis and Kroikle, very experienced, with, uh, I don't know, more than 5,000 games <laughs> played in Board Game Arena. And on the other hand, uh, yeah, the Spanish uh, guys are also playing a lot, so... In the lineup, we have uh, Vale, played more than 5,000 games. Oscaridis, again, as you mentioned. So they seem more experienced online, uh, the Spanish. Yeah. But who knows? Yeah. I saw a lot of surprises uh, this year in the European Championship. So I saw Belarus. I saw yeah, a lot of interesting results so far. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a good point about Belarus, uh, because uh, <laughs> uh, so Bel Belarus won Czechia, which was a, a bit of a surprise, um, although Belarus, I, I think they had both made some improvements f for the play and also f found um, str some more strong players as well. Um, there were many teams that added uh, some, some strength. But then also Belgium, that was a huge surprise that they won exactly. in the UK. It's, um, I'm not quite sure how that happened. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> well, well done Belgium, I guess. Uh, oh, uh, is, is, is Oscaridis joining us? Nice. Uh, well, I, Os Os Oscaridis' wife is joining us. Um, okay. Okay. So maybe we, we have one more reason to comment on Oscaridis's game. I still, <laughs> I, I still want, I still want to be biased and in, in, uh, slightly uh, sort of uh, in favor of my former teammate. So let's start with, with Luda Celis and see how the first game goes. If it's interesting, we stay there. If um, and but uh, we'll try to monitor something else. So maybe let's do it like this. So together, let's comment on these games, um, on the action. I would also be very curious to hear your thought process about uh, the things. I'll explain why, why in a second. But if you, if you could also monitor a little bit the other games, yes. tell me if you, if you find some other situations, if you could have, have them open, that would be um, 
ideal. So the reason why I have a selfish interest in hearing your thought process, because as some of you know, uh, Romania is in the same group as Latvia. And, uh, you know, if, if that would be... Now I've invited uh, Bogdan so he can uh, explain his thought <laughs> process and reveal the team secrets. So that we can have a, <laughs> so that we have a better chance against Romania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm here to reveal some secrets. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So Grudeselis is not starting his game yet. Actually, so the interesting, like you and um, you and Marian are brothers, right? Yes. Uh, yes. You, yes. 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 Is it just the two of you? Is there any uh, anybody else, anybody else in your? family that plays Carcassonne? No, 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 no. We are only yeah, just two of us. We started together to learn Carcassonne in 2012 or 13, I believe. So at the beginning, I was uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, good at it and winning. But afterwards, Marianne was better. Now we beat each other. <laughs> uh, but uh, last, the last game was in the World Championship. So I played against Marianne in the World Championship this year in the third round. Who Unfortunately, won? <laughs> Marianne won, <laughs> and my chances, uh, yeah, went down after that. <laughs> um, but yeah, actually, both ended up in not uh, accessing the quarterfinals. So I don't know; it was unfortunate for us. But I would have preferred not playing against Marianne in the World Championships, of course. Yeah, of. course. Of course, that's understandable. Um, so, so uh, what was the final result? Did uh, Marian get four victories, and did you get three? Was that the case? No, both uh, got uh, three victories out of five. And one round before the quarterfinals, we had uh, yeah three out of four. So we both had chances to to access the quarterfinals, but uh, in the last game, we both uh, lost. I lost against uh, yeah the um, the Belgian guy. And Marianne lost against my uh, my teammate from UK, <laughs> Ted the uh, oh, is the BJ. Uh, mm -hmm. no, uh, in interesting. Um, yeah, so I've, I've I've played with Ted online a little bit, and I also uh, lost to him a couple of years ago in 2019 uh, mm -hmm. in uh, in in the British Championship. Well, th that that was before I knew who he was. Maybe maybe I would have maybe I would have played better if I if I if I if I knew who I was up, who I was up against. Oh, I mean, maybe tell me a little bit uh, while the players have not started playing a little bit more about the championship. So uh, how was the atmosphere? How the, was how was the experience? Because I could have I have a little bit of a uh, missing out syndrome over there. Um, so with seventy players, it was that seventy, right? No, no, it was forty-two actually. So they expected 70, but there were uh, finally 42. Oh, so 48 on paper, but some, yeah, yeah, but six uh, did not uh, make it. So there were 42 only. 42. So this is only slightly more than usual. Because the reason exactly. I was asking is that, like, with this, with the same Swiss system, but with much more players, this the competition is much, much tighter. <laughs> like, you can't make no mistakes. You can't even like afford to lose a game. Then your chances uh, increase drastically. Yeah, 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 but it, it was the same this year. So if you didn't have uh, four out of five, you had no chance to, yeah, to reach the quarterfinals. So the same <laughs> case this year. And the atmosphere uh, that you asked, the atmosphere was uh, very nice. So there were a lot of friends meeting for the first time. I remember maybe I know Marianne meeting Melvin, for example, from Brazil. He was also in the chat. Hi, Melvin here. And uh, also, yeah, Per from Catalonia meeting the others. So it was a really nice atmosphere between the games, a lot of chats, a lot of uh, hugs, <laughs> a lot of photos. So I really, yeah, really enjoyed it. It was really cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, okay, awesome, awesome to hear that. Hopefully, hopefully that can um, happen again, both for, for you and mm -hmm. um, for, for, for all of us. Um, oh, uh, uh, by the way, uh, uh, Bogdan, are you, do you have the chat open somewhere? Because I am having a look at it um, yes. once in a while, but uh, it would be great if you could also um, ha tell me what's going on. All right, we have a first first game. They're starting. I'm op I think I have every the right thing open. Uh, if you can see, okay. Matt can do the cell is both true juicy uh, city tiles with shields. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But so far we're starting with standard moves. Yep. 
I will open in parallel the, the other games. Oh yeah, that will be certainly very helpful. Interestingly, that Ludicent is now already thinking a little bit on the second move, but it's good. Mm -hmm. I definitely prefer players to, who play too slow rather than too fast. So I know mm -hmm. I, I, I might be in the in the minority. It's first of all, it, it makes life easier for me as a commentator because because if I watch somebody like uh, Mikhail Rus or Melvin Quaresma play, I just can't make sense of it. I mean, I can make sense of it, but then also to <laughs> to to talk fast enough uh, to match this uh, the speed of the game, it's it's just too hard. All right, so now Ludacelis may be in a slightly slightly. Uh, more advantageous position. Um, mm -hmm. So, as we see, was this move with this triple city that was made by Madcan? Is that right? Yeah. Oh, but that was an interesting situation because he had nowhere to put it. It was the, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Because I was about to say that was a mistake, but no, it's <laughs> he, he, that was literally the only yeah. possible move unless you want your, yourself to get blocked. So. Mm -hmm. um, now, yeah. yeah. Ludacell is with an early monastery. This is quite, uh, yeah, fortunate. <laughs> Very fortunate, especially it's such a nice spot mm -hmm. because there is potential for extra value over here. If you get a crossroad tiles and there are seven, seven left, you could score um, yeah. a, a, an extra exactly. two points. The main value mm -hmm. from the monasteries, as I've noticed, is not necessarily the, the, mo the monastery itself. Because, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's nine tiles, nine points. Uh, and it's so it's almost like a road, but just because you or your opponent can build stuff around, you sort of you score twice for the stuff that's around the monastery. That's why I try to meeple them um, as much as possible, especially at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the top players even go to the extreme. So recently we had this match with France, mm -hmm. Latvia, France. Oh, that was. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm uploading review videos really soon for that one because we had some very interesting games over there. We won a close match 3-2. Um, the Russians, of Vladimir Kovalev and Vladimir Chendev, were commenting live. And at some point I had like two meeples left and I, and I drew a monastery. And, mm -hmm. and, and Vladimir was still uh, like uh, saying that, oh no, why did Alexei not put a meeple? He should put a meeple. And I was like, come on, I, I only have two. Like, what are you going to do? But the thing I'm saying this is that they, they view monasteries as such a valuable source of points. And as I've been saying this, we have these guys already, well, creating a lot of points for Ludacelis, now a field meeple mm -hmm. already. Um, so I'd say his mm -hmm. advantage now looks quite sizable, although Madkin can now get these four points for the roads, which he should have, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that was a little bit yeah. of oversight over here. Um, so, uh, Bogdan, how, how do you assess this position at the moment? Yeah, so this field has a lot of potential, so that's uh, it's good that they place the, the farmers uh, quite early. Just as a side uh, remark, uh, they say in chat that we can maybe turn the BGA sound off, uh, somebody just mentioned that. Maybe it's a bit annoying in, uh, yeah, in the yeah. stream. Yeah, that, that's that's true actually. Uh, I, I and somebody and somebody else said that uh, yeah, the voice is not uh, heard. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, surrounding uh, quality is only the right uh, earpiece. I don't know. Oh, but yeah, that could be a thing actually. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> l let me just uh, well, let me just try and see if I can do something about this. In the meantime, can you just um... yes, yes. So uh, I will just comment the, yeah, yeah. the game. We will try to fix it. More. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So Matt can just place um, yeah free city tile to expand the city and also to try to attack uh, the one point uh, city of Ludacelis. In the meantime, we'll uh, yeah we lost also the the attack of the. Um, the field by Madcan, so he plays the second farmer closing uh, city. Uh, Ludacelis has uh, has a good position with two monasteries, so one is uh, almost closed. I believe I lost your image, uh, Alexei. So I'm commenting a, a freezed uh, uh, yeah screen. <laughs> it might be developed. Ah, okay, then it's uh, yeah. Should so at some point with the cellist. Yeah, it's, now it's there. Now it's there. Only the cell is, um, yeah, somehow um, 
save the city or at least try to to save it. Unfortunately, there are only there's only one tile left there. Uh, for that, uh, oh, actually no, it's a triangle. If uh, sorry, <laughs> it's late also for me. I, I thought it's a field there. Okay. Did you fix it? The the sound. I think so. I oh, I did the best I could. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's again uh, frozen for me, so I see some yeah frames. <laughs> I miss some uh, moves. Should should be back now again. Yes, I guess. yes, yes, it's back. Yeah. So now um, yeah, Medcan has the splitting tiles, right? Uh, yeah, he has a splitting tile. Uh, but thirty thirty though, it's uh, quite interesting. Yeah. And and the thing is that Madcan has. Well, almost has two meeples on the field. Mm -hmm. um, although there is one connection point over here as well, mm -hmm. um, which Ludicelli should use really soon, and Madcan should close off. So uh, mm -hmm. th this is a good move. But a move that yes. Madcan could, cons could consider was putting the straight line over here to close off this connection. Ho however, on the other hand, there is still this spot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. Ludicelli should use some of them pretty soon. Oh, well, there's this spot as well. Actually, no, it's it's not that urgent mm -hmm. if, he, if the field is pretty open. And in a position like this, you can actually go for very organic development. You can, you know, grab points for roads, start a new city somewhere, get um, three points for this road over here, uh, get some crossroads, mm -hmm. finish the monastery. And, and after all that, when you have all the meeples and the points advantage, after you convert everything, then you just jump everything on the field. So it's very interesting in these open positions you can very often postpone the attack and do everything with the with the most um, suitable tile and this appears to be Ludicelli's strategy. So for example with this tile over here he could have chosen to continue this city mm -hmm. and drop a field meeple but instead he says no I can do that later let me mm -hmm. win this city first finish the monastery first and then do all of this other stuff. Yep. Yeah. Very, very nice creative move by uh, Ludicelis over here to block yeah. the blocking square. I always exactly. like these moves, they look quite aesthetically appealing. And mm -hmm. um, however, there's still one, two, there are two starting tiles. Um, uh, and yeah, Ludicelis now limits mm -hmm. this blocking square to two starting tiles. Uh, but the probability is on still, still on his side. There should be more of things yep. that fit here than things that fit here. So, well, dividers are not in the game, but I think the, the regular city caps, they're all five of them still in the game. Am I wrong? Let me have a look. No, you're, you're fine. So, yeah, all the caps are still in the game, the simple ones. So all the parallel caps uh, went out, the three of them, but uh, the simple ones are there. Yeah. It was a nice draw by Ludicellis, closing the road and uh, not permitting uh, Medcan to attack it. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a bit of advantage now with two monasteries and uh, yeah. Oh, and also nice partial block here by Ludicellis. Mm -hmm. Not only does it constrict the monastery uh, to mm -hmm. a a 75% chance of getting completed only. Uh, but this also makes sure that Madcan needs the same tile in both places, both to mm -hmm. block Ludicelis' thing and both, to, and both to complete the monastery. And actually, I would be very... I would I was almost rooting for Madcan to get this tile first, just to see what he prioritizes, where he wants mm -hmm. this or this. Um, yep. Actually, what would you do, Bogdan? What would you prioritize? I would block uh, both monasteries <laughs> for sure. But in in the meantime, uh, Ludicelis draw the the simple cap, and now it's uh, yeah, it's really an advantage, I would say. Yes, indeed, and it's almost uh, bordering on insurmountable. Um, well, Mad Connection now makes a really good move in the sense that he does not let um, yes Ludicelis start a connection. But let let's think about it. If uh, Madcan wins the field, will that even be enough? So let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15 points. Let's say it's going to be 18 six. because of this. 6, mm -hmm. yeah. And I assume... Oh, is it 6 already? Well, now it's 6. Yes, it's, now it's 6. Yeah, yeah. And... Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Oh, check this out. So he even finishes yeah. the city. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, interesting that's move, legit. yeah. Interesting move. I'm not. I'm not sure if I would do that actually. Um, so, in in this position, uh, when I have a, a, a points advantage, and if I win a city, I create this imbalance. Mm -hmm. City is roughly twelve points, and the field is roughly well eighteen points. But there is this advantage on the scoreboard, and you don't necessarily need win, to win everything to win the game. So, probably what I would have done with this tile, I would just I would have just scored four points over here, even though it's except it's, it's effectively only one point, just to clean off this empty city cap, and then mm -hmm. maybe tried sticking in a road into this city um, if possible. So this might have been a little bit premature. On the other mm -hmm. hand, uh, when your opponent controls the field, even if you don't want to win the field, it's sometimes uh, nice to annoy the, your opponent by trying to attack because the opponent now needs to spend some tiles on defending, like now, um, so Matt can didn't get points for either of these monasteries. So he just has to use this for blocking. Um, yeah, and in the meantime, there are fewer and fewer tiles running out. So this is a move that basically diverts some of the attention. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, uh, Bogdan, did you see anything interesting in the other games? I tried to yeah to keep the pace with that, but it's uh, <laughs> quite difficult to um, yeah not uh, very much so. Euclid is uh, leading a bit in the second game, and also the um, yeah, Kroikla is behind a bit. Oh. So nothing uh, yeah, yeah, interesting. Interesting. So so uh, Kroikla, or or, or uh, he's actually one of the three more experienced players who were um, in the combined Latvian Lithuanian team. So uh, mm -hmm. these are the three players that I assume are expected to carry the team forward. They have mm -hmm. two newcomers as well, and I would certainly be curious to see how they perform. Uh, but in the combined team, Latvia Lithuania, we had eight people. We had five Latvians and three Lithuanians. So when mm -hmm. uh, the split occurred, it was um, much more difficult to for Lithuania to get a team than for us because we only had to get three more players they had to get five more players and with the new rules that uh the minimum is now eight players instead of six and that everybody has to play actually uh speaking of that uh, what, what what did you think of the rule changes uh, bogdan yeah i'm i'm actually not fully understanding it so it says that uh, if you don't rotate uh, every player you lose one point and then for me it's not clear what kind of point is that it's in the final uh yeah um uh, stage or it's only in uh, in the difference of the the games. It's not clear what kind of point you lose. I believe that there will be teams who will prefer to, yeah, to not uh, rotate uh, everybody, and uh, focusing on uh, yeah uh, winning uh, most of the games with uh, the first lineup. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Laba Naktis just lost three points. Marian just informed me. Thanks, Marian. Oh, hi, Marian. Thanks, thanks for being yeah. here as well. Uh, Labanactis. Okay, three points. So that was a relatively close match. Actually, we yes. might, we might consider going to their second duel right after this. Uh, by the way, in the in the meantime, Matt can already trying to risk it all, going for the nine point mm -hmm. monastery to tie this meeple and maybe score nine points along the well. But th that's that's the, that's the correct approach. That is the correct spirit. Like when you're losing by this much, you have to try the yes. crazy, crazy things to. Yeah. He's quite this. behind. He's quite behind, actually. So with the big city for uh, Ludacelis and uh, a huge <laughs> uh, yeah, difference on the scoreboard right now, yeah. Yeah, it's quite it's quite tough. He yeah. needs to score easy points now. Exactly, and he needs to get lucky really soon. Like he needs to get a city mm -hmm. cap on the next move and the monastery on the next move, and then maybe something to tie this city on the next move right after that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not quite not the right timing. I mean, I guess you, yep. well, you calculate the tiles here, of course. Um, maybe you can join from this side, maybe you can join from this side. Maybe you can just score three points just to get a little bit more, and then you get something to join to the city with. Mm -hmm. 
But it's the last meeple of Madkin. I don't know if uh, he will place it uh, now. I know, hoping for a connection there. I didn't count the, the triangles anyway to see how many options he has. To, you know, I think take three also left. Three triangles three left, left mm -hmm. which is decent. Actually, decent, that's, that's yeah. quite a lot for the end of the game. Uh, I'm yep. not sure how many city caps are left to finish off the city because he needs to do that really, really soon. There are two reasons. One, obviously, he needs the points from the city. Second, he needs the meeple back. And third, mm -hmm. he needs to make sure that for the moment that uh, this um, square, for the moment that yep. he draws the monastery, this is an, an empty nine-point spot that he can score that like without the loss of a meeple. So everything yeah, there in the heart. Three left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. They're still uh, free in the... Ah, oh, it's good. Oh, yeah. So good chances to close that... Uh, yeah. Yeah. 10, 10 points city and also... Maybe um easy monastery. So Oscar did this one. Uh -huh. With um, quite a difference. And also the Spanish... Uh, yeah, Zocanero. Zocanero. One also. So unfortunately, we have uh, yeah a bad start for the Lithuanians, but yeah. Right. So I see. I assume it's, it's going to be four-one. Well, like the, the, the if I I would be very surprised if Mad can somehow somehow pull this out. But uh, well, let's see what happens mm -hmm. in the next month. So we had you said uh, Labanaktis had a had a close match. So we might actually yes. head uh, to the next one right after this. But I just want to see if anything crazy happens over here. So for example, now Ludacelis is, mm -hmm. is, is, is trying actively to lose this game because when you're ahead by so much, you definitely do not commit a, z a meeple to zero points. Unless you have cal calculated absolutely precisely that you can, um, that you can do mm -hmm. something about it. You know, like if there is one tile that you need, one that your opponent needs and well, yeah, this is what's going to happen. So four points plus with tempo with the block and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Agreed. there was a very interesting game between Czechia and Japan that I still been postponing the review of, but it's happening this year. At some point, it's happening uh, where the Japanese player Snow Island lost to Martin Moisesh um, mm -hmm. just when he was thirty points ahead, and he had a bunch of monasteries, and Martin had the field. Uh, but mm -hmm. then Snow Island, for some reason, decided that he wants to humili a humiliation, and then he mm -hmm. like went to fight for the field as well. He lost the fight for the field, and like he he ended up with three meeples that score zero points, and he lost the game by one point or something like this. So, mm -hmm. even though he had a hundred percent win in hand, um, hi Anike, and the co-commentator is uh, Bogdan Kurkan, whom you also might have known as Game Over. From the Romanian team. Yeah. So in the meantime, uh, Ludacelis, as you said, tried to yeah to come to in the field, and uh, also somehow uh, tried to save the spot for the curve. Unfortunately, Matt can just uh, got it. So sure. yeah. I would say I would say I would say fortunate that that's like if if you're trying a play like this, that's like a fair outcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, agree agree so no i have to also uh i don't know may maybe sometimes in my stream i'm like a little a little bit too critical oh you know you should turn that curve the other way uh but mm -hmm. I, I i like precision uh a lot in the game so for example i was playing this game against uh the french leader vive the other day yeah yes i know i watched it yeah oh yeah and the first game i um one with a seven point difference, I think, and there was a hundred percent probability of win, like I think ten tiles before the end, some, something like this. But on my last move, I'm still kind of kicking myself because I could have played, um, I could have scored eight more points just being more precise. Um, so there was th th there was a possibility of connecting to his eight point city with a hundred percent chance, and I missed that. Instead, I went uh, for. Mm -hmm. Um, for just a one one point addition to my monastery, um, I don't know if you remember this. That was at the very, at the very end of yep. the game, and even though it, it it didn't matter for the outcome, it kind of feels you know that uh, I still want to play precise until the um, until mm -hmm. the very end. I generally like care more about the game um, than the outcome. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I saw it, I observed it, but yeah, you had the game anyway. In the meantime, Ludacellis drew the monastery with the road, so no easy points for Madken to to catch yeah. up with, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and also, yeah, he got blocked for uh, with the, that meeple. He tried to to reach the field from outside, but yeah, it was a risky move anyway. I don't know if it was uh, needed, but it's uh, yeah in full control, I would say, right? So field has now two, four, six, seven, eight, but it's yeah. Eight, but of course it's nowhere near enough and the Celis has mm -hmm. plus 50 on the scoreboard mm -hmm. around plus 15 I think for the city oh plus Definitely. 12 actually yeah oh but but mm -hmm. plus 15 with these two cities uh, minus mm -hmm. 8 with a monastery but it's just going to be a completely ridiculous score uh, but overall I, I well I mean the Celis got quite quite a lot of luck this game but I think uh, the experience shows as well um, he played very precisely at the start, very aggressively, grabbed yes. onto point scoring opportunities, rode over here, uh, early field meeple. And that's actually an interesting thing. Even though Ludicelis lost the field just because he threw in the field meeple first, did benefit him a little bit because Madcan had to spend more uh -huh. moves. Uh, like, for example, uh -huh. he threw this field meeple and sacrificed this uh, and sacrificed if an opportunity to score the four point road over here which ended up um being in ludicelis's possession so in carcassonne throwing in the first meeple uh, can be mm -hmm. quite important all right but i think yeah. the next game so what one which one do you recommend shall we go to labanactis or shall we go to oscaris uh, uh, let's uh, let's go to labanactis so it's uh, the final of the second game Euclid in the meantime won his game, so somehow is three against two for Spain. Let's see the Labanactis, I would say, because it's uh, ending soon. Five ties remaining, oh, four ties. So did you say it's three two rather than four one? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, interesting. Uh, so, so who? Uh, hmm. The uh, Euclid won. So Ludacelis and Euclid won their uh, their games. And actually, it looks like Labanactis is doing not too shabby in this one. Plus 17 on the scoreboard, some fields, which are tied, mm -hmm. which are actually belong to Labanactis. No. So it's going to be a tie, right? It's going to be 1-1 one, one in this duel. Mm -hmm. Seems so, yeah. Also, they seem to be playing incredibly quickly. This game lasted yes. 8 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Something like this, yes. So they just finished the first game. Um quite interesting yeah <laughs> uh, well I see it looks also like, like it's been quite a dynamic game you see lots of blocking hole hole mm -hmm. another hole so uh, we can see um, I, let, let's stay with the with this with the decider game for this one especially if, if the guys are playing quickly um, you yeah. know this means that we maybe get to see another game after this also, I have yep. to ask uh, Ludacelis later who is this mysterious person, Labanactis, because they apparently haven't have barely played on uh, board game arena, and mm -hmm. the games that they have played are just tr practice matches against other Lithuanian players. Exactly. So it's a new account, only five games or something, win rate uh, almost one hundred percent. So it's uh, yeah, quite new in board game arena. They know that's good. That. Um, they're recruiting off platform and mm -hmm. in fact uh, because of the new rule in Latvia we also recruited a couple of people off platform as well so we have a newcomer um, Christopher Sritos who mm -hmm. just joined board game arena like a month ago and already shot up to 500 LO in just a few okay. days um, yeah yeah, so uh, also but a few other teams have the same thing. Belarus and Ukraine um, b just brought somebody new to uh, this. I don't know who this person is, but their screen name is Nander Talica. And when we're going to comment on the Ukraine game, this is definitely somebody to look out for. So we played a practice match against mm -hmm. uh, Ukraine. Uh, that was a s close one. Like we won 4-3. Uh, well, we played 7-on-7. Seven seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nairn Dintalica, the newcomer in the Ukraine, um, ended up 
quite convincingly winning over our experienced player Maris Lasdinch with the screen name um, on mm -hmm. Denver. So I'm definitely happy that more people are joining uh, this community. Labana. Uh, okay, they are starting now. The decisive game. Awesome. And already, as a result of this game, Labanakt has gained 50 new ELO points. <laughs> okay, I'm so curious. Um, so, w what do you play in this? Come on, Meeple, Meeple. Yes, let's go. And I think, actually, I might know who this is. Like, very few players play like this. I like this opening move a lot. It's just mm -hmm. so greedy. It looks super risky, but the thing is, you really don't end up with this meet meeple blocked very often, and when you do, it can, score, it can score you some six points. Um, what do you think of this response to the straight line? Do you ever play like that, or do you just no. do the same move without so a meeple? I, without a meeple, so I, I never play a meeple on a single road without, uh, yeah, <laughs> any future. So now he he got very lucky, so now he can, uh, yeah, close one four point road and also building the city. It's a fortunate situation, but uh, I, it's it's risky anyway. So to place on a one uh, segment road, you know, the meeple. Oh, that's now it's true. a good it's draw risky for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good draw for uh, the Spanish player with the monastery. Oh yeah, quite a lot. It's in six points plus. It's controlling this meeple. Mm -hmm. so it's going to get one mm -hmm. uh, spare mm -hmm. point, but still. I like the position of Labanactis a lot. He has a monastery over here. He has a mm -hmm. almost complete city, almost complete road. And as you see, so the, the, he did end up getting value. Like it, oh. so, it, it, it's a good road after all. Ah, yeah. Okay. Now with uh, yeah, limiting the city, there are still uh, yeah, three tiles, uh, all the tiles in the game actually, uh, the starting tile. But still, uh, if he closes the city, then he will attack. Again, one uh, meeple on a one-point road for uh, Labanactis. Of course, attacking the road for um, yeah, for the I cube or how to pronounce it. I don't know. Yeah. Also, I've I've got a comment in the private chat that um, my audio is more quiet than Bogdan's audio. I've tried fixing it. Let me know if it became any better. It is possible to. Um, to move around. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, Ever Ever's comment is good. It could be somebody else's uh, second account. And based on the first move, um, I think I know who this somebody else might be. Um, <laughs> but can I, you I, share it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't want to reveal Lithuania's team secrets, but I, I have a suspicion because, well, very few people place a move like this, but... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... It's, a, it's a very good draw now. Uh, for uh, Labanactis, very lucky, <laughs> but a good draw. Yeah. Actually, yeah, he took the road, but uh, let the the field, the nine points, of course, can be attacked afterwards if it's taken by by the Spanish. Exactly. You can, uh, yeah. It, yeah. And, it's and easily I think that's why that's why you take the road. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and and this why he doesn't take this again. He just oh, okay. So th yes. this this greedy player, I I know who's greedy. But I, I, but now yeah, this is this is really hard <laughs> to attack. Yes, yes, yes. Now it becomes interesting. But if you think about it, it's, it's not that bad because Labanakti scored eight points without the loss mm -hmm. of Meeple, right? Um, um, mm -hmm. IQ IQ cube. I cube. I would say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I cube scored twelve points without with the loss of Meeple. So basically mm -hmm. he. Uh, if you just cancel this out, he scored four points per meeple, which is roughly mm -hmm. what it deserves. In the meantime, he went for for like a 50-50 risk with this city over here uh, and mm -hmm. got this, but Labanactis just in time got this. And of course, even if it's the last meeple, he has to attack over here. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, Labanactis with meeple problems, although great points advantage, but, mm -hmm. well, I know one player who tends to get in meeple <laughs> problems with great, great point advantage. Okay, I know who this is. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it, it's not Muzacello, right? <laughs> so in the meantime, Kroikle uh, won the second game, so they will go in the decisive game. Again, thanks, Marianne, for <laughs> for the updates. I wouldn't have the chance to, to watch also in parallel the games. Nice. Thank you, Marianne. Close, close games. That's good that we're getting those. 
Mm-hmm. Now, you see, so uh, Labanactis uh, played a lot on roads, uh, short roads, right? And now he has uh, two meeples blocked on two points each. And yeah, he struggles to to get them back. And he plays now without the meeples, so hmm, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he will lose a lot of value for that. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, well, these are still curves. It's okay. Uh, because uh, there's still four of those left, so it's a 94% cha- chance. It's acceptable. Mm-hmm. It's just, it could happen very late in the game, and that would be the annoying thing. And also, he needs the same tiles everywhere. He needs, well, he needed a curve here, but he now wisely blocked this mm-hmm. spot because um to to yep. to cancel out the, this meeple so now there are six tiles for unblocking that are suitable for labanactis which is in principle acceptable so um mm-hmm. well now there's only five tiles oh but this field now looks so juicy i don't know what's oh i mm-hmm. forgot about the city okay so that's interesting does labanactis actually need the field to win and i'd say that he probably does mm-hmm. well i mean he's so he's he's at plus. Six. It's gonna be super close. So he's at plus six, uh, but he has yep. this spare monastery of seven points. So he's at plus thirteen, and this minus fifteen. So it he's at minus two. He's at minus one over here. So it's at minus three. He's at plus two over here. So he's at minus one, but minus one meeple. And I think um, if Labanactis manages to very soon retrieve this meeple, then he will have um, a slight advantage. Um, if mm-hmm. not, well, IQ yeah. might just win the game. The thing is that Labanactis has higher chances to to get the meeples back, right? If with simple curves, uh, while that... uh, yeah, the Spanish yeah is that's a bit. Uh, but the Spanish another... player is the one that gets that's getting the simple curves. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay. Now exactly. if the Labanactis like try something risky, just put it over here mm-hmm. without a meeple. Mm-hmm. Or or with the meeple? Good question. I think without. Without, yeah. In the meantime, uh, Oscaridis just won the second game, so mm-hmm. that means a point. Uh, for uh, yeah, for for Spain. Alrighty. So it's a two. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess I should have thought of somehow putting the score on the screen. Well, I'm gonna do it somehow next stream. Um, yeah, it's a little bit too late now. So it's going to keep in mind it's 1-0 or 1-0 for Spain. Oh, with Meeple after all. Oh, um, uh, okay. I then like... Mm. Nah. I like this move without the Meeple. And I think if this were actually Mojacello, he would... Oh, you lucky, lucky person. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The thing is, like, you, you're hoping for the same thing. Like, why commit the meeple? You're hoping this will happen on the next turn. Just put the meeple on the next turn. You don't have to do it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this is the last crossroad, and uh, he, he will end up with two meeples on uh, on those roads. Uh, yeah. Although that's okay, because it's a 10-point road. Like, it's uh, it's perfectly healthy way to spend your meeple on. Um so is he winning or is he not? It's gonna be super close. Mm-hmm. Actually, if I were Labanactis, I would have tried to to create some uh, space to attack the field uh, in the upper left corner with that with one meeple at least. Yeah. Yeah, but I but I think what he has decided is that he doesn't need the field necessarily, so he's just going for quick points. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Um, iCube is getting the city caps. Yeah. In both yeah, instances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, missy points now for iCube, so three points. Sometimes the last tiles just make the difference, right? If you just score easy points at the end, and uh, it makes a difference. <laughs> exactly. Oh, and Labanak oh. just got the meeple, but uh, he didn't mm-hmm. get the city caps. Okay, so take the field if you're iCube. You have to, right? At six points, there's nothing better, or is there? Yeah. Or maybe if you if you calculate if there is one triangle remaining, maybe you have to block this off and mm-hmm. then hope to just to not to give this to Labanactis. But yeah, definitely iCube being getting some massive draws over here. This monastery over here. This stuff over here. Uh, lots of curves. Uh, this guy over here, um, mm-hmm. and lots of city caps. Mm-hmm. 
So... But there are uh, there are no tiles left. There were no triangles in uh, in the game there. It was a um, yeah miscounting, I believe. That's true, and he, so he actually only helped mm -hmm. Labonactis over here, mm -hmm. and probably Labonactis is gonna win now. This is this is worth more than this field over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, now we so have the... to take the six points. Yeah. Yeah. So all the triangles were off. I don't know. Um... Alrighty. Um, I didn't count, but I think it's something like plus four for Labonactis. No. Mm-hmm. I also did not uh, count. Plus two, yeah. Plus two, yeah. And you know where the last two points <laughs> came from? From this yeah, of tile course. over here? <laughs> of course, so, yes. Uh, IQ yeah. helping uh, his... Uh, um, mm -hmm. Something to analyze after the game for the Spanish team. Yeah, just... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Carefully count up stuff. Well, well played Labanactis, and definitely an enjoyable game to watch, like both players doing risky stuff. Uh, it was something I, w I would, you know, have my heart throbbing if I were the team captain, but as a commentator and spectator, that's um, <laughs> absolutely great. All right, so so we have 1-1 one, one in the match. Um, mm -hmm. I think we should, so Oscaridis unfortunately already finished this game, so we can't see the strongest Spanish, Spanish player. Um, shall we look at Euclid maybe, or... Oh, no, how, shall, um, let me, let's look, let's look at at, at, at uh, Kraukne. Mm -hmm. Or, so they're playing a decider, right? Uh, yes, also Ludacelis is ending the game now. Only two tiles left. I assume he's winning, or is he? Uh, let me check a bit. Because the first game seems so. to be convincing, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there is quite interesting field for Ludacelis. Monastery, a big city. I don't know what to say. So Medican is uh, ahead with eleven points on uh, on the scoreboard right now. Ah, so we might have another decider. Equal field. Yeah, I just joined this one. I <laughs> okay. But I will just uh, yeah watch it in background and let's maybe focus on this one in uh, Kroiklem. Yeah, that's right. Although I'm not sure how interesting this game is going to be. I mean, it, it looked like very eventful. So this fight for the big city is something that was quite interesting for mm -hmm. observer. But now Socanero looks to have a sizable advantage because he has this field over here. He has plus 12 on the scoreboard. This meeple is permanently blocked because one, two, three, four, all of these guys that mm -hmm. all over here are out. I think it's... It just looks to me that it was a 50-50 situation that mm -hmm. Kraukli lost. What about this guy over here? Well, good news for Kraukli. There are all There three. are still. Mm -hmm. All three. They are all, yeah. mm -hmm. They're all free, yeah. Oh, and another, another lucky tile. Mm -hmm. out, like separation with yes. the block. That's, yes. Uh... yes, 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 indeed. Okay, so he's back in the game. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know who has the advantage now. Mm -hmm. So the reason why Tokinero might have the advantage is because he's still likely to win this big city, isn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why winning? Just uh, equalizing, oh, tying, right? Tying, right. Tying. Yeah. Yeah, 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 oh, tying. so it's not a big deal at all. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And yeah. Oh, there is there is the tile. There is the cap with, with curve to the right, and it just <laughs> at the right time for uh, Kroiklem. Exactly, it comes with tempo and the field mm -hmm. meeple, that's... Mm -hmm. um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the game has that's... turned really quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, Tsokonet is going to finish his monastery, and then this guy is also going to be worth seven points. It's something worth doing. Oof. Mm. Now, Kraukle going for creative moves. I'm not sure I'm going to do that. And also, he played them so quickly, I'm not sure he actually counted the tiles. I would mm. have just grabbed four yeah. points. Just... Mm -hmm, the thing mm -hmm. is, by the way, if you're short on time and if you're not sure what to do, grabbing four points is rarely a mistake. Exactly, yeah. yeah. In the meantime, the cell is uh, lost against Madkan. Now we have an interesting match also there. Maybe we can watch it. Uh, yeah, interesting. We can go there maybe at some point. Definitely. Uh, let's do it after this because it's going to finish in just two minutes. And I still don't know which way. Uh... Yeah, here mm -hmm. comes the tight city. Oh, then, yeah, then the connection, yeah. They should focus now on, on the field to attack it, so it's, uh, yeah, quite a good one. 
five cities, right? Yeah, so much so that in this instance, making this risky move and attacking from mm -hmm. below and going from the outside might just be justifiable for for Kraukle. And I hope he's considering that. One of the reasons why it's justifiable, because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all of the crossroads are out. And also this square is slightly protected. Uh, actually, there is uh, one in uh, in the game left, if I did not... No, uh, one, count. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, no? No, 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 not the crossroads, but uh, the cap with the curve on the right. Uh, you you mean ah, that if you... right? Yeah, right? that's what you mean. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. Di I didn't think that you could block this way. Yeah, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's also true. But, I mean, I assume that there's fewer of them that curve, so that was an advantageous move. And if you're Kraukle, you're behind. Like, you need to... Mm -hmm. um... Yeah, risk, yeah, to, to, yeah, to perform some risky moves. And you just really have to win the field. And I think the reason why Kraukle is behind is because of this. Just take mm -hmm. four points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um... Yeah, 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 yeah. And as I said, I don't know if uh, he counted or not. I believe he didn't. Definitely, I don't think it's possible to count at this speed. Like, it, just by at the timing, speed, yeah. by the timing, you you can tell if they're counting or not. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, Kraukle, uh now do it, do it, do it. Let's go. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, not but there. Also, it's a low oh, probability. No. Yes, yes, yes. Damn. <laughs> I think he just didn't see it. Uh, lower probability. No. <laughs> okay, find another one. Well, how do you find another one? Okay, this one. Finish the yes, city. Then Tokenaito has to go here. Well, depending yeah, on the tiles remaining, but just almost instantly here. Maybe even with the monastery meeple, just in case, because like it's not that you, you can score points anywhere. Yes. Okay. Now do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. If there's a curve, do it. I... Mean, what else are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's quite hard now, but. Um... He didn't have the chance anyway, so if he would have put it on on that exterior field, he didn't uh, draw any curve in the meantime, right? So well, Not yet. Not yet, of course, yes. And uh, the cap with the curve on the right was not yet uh, drawn. Let me check. There, are, there is still one in the game. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, he takes some time to think, maybe to find a way to to attack the field. Yeah, he 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 be, he better do that. By the way, I think he missed another chance of attacking. So, what 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 why? What was that? And and here the curve was there. Like you could have. You could have done. Oh no, no! And here, here's your curve. No. Uh, yes, but uh, the Spanish guy just do the yeah the blocking. Oh, that's tiles, true. You know? But but yeah. like, but, yeah. but we're being results oriented. We can't really like say that this is what would have happened because the thing mm -hmm. is like he 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 could have gone for a fifty percent probability. If you are mm -hmm. in such a bad situation, that's an excellent probability. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think he just simply didn't see that. It's not like he... Like, I don't see how he, how he choose this over this. I mean, I think he just didn't see that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but but this move was basically giving up. Like, mm -hmm. just saying, okay, I, I lost the game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. GG, well played, says Kraukle. And I think, yeah, I mean, it's, so we didn't see the whole game, but uh, Tsokunero did seem a little bit more convincing. And um, so congratulations to the Spanish player. Well played, uh, well-deserved points. So it's 2-1, Spain, Lithuania, which means that Lithuania needs to win two more games if they want the chance at victory at this match. All right, I think we need to go to Ludicelis, right? Because of the decider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Did Okay, just starting. So they uh, they had a break. That's perfect. They, had, mm -hmm. they just starting now. Thank you so much, Andreus, for doing this for us. Ah, uh, yeah, Andreus is Ludicelis's uh, real name. Actually, I don't even know his last name. I know that the first name is Andreus. Um, but also interesting, the screen name uh, Ludicelis in Lithuanian it means something like. Uh, I think it's actually like made up words. It's like sadness and sorrow that it, they just the word for sadness mm -hmm. and sorrow put in together, or it means just sorrow. But like something, 
something that's the opposite of happy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it's certainly uh, indicative of certain mindset uh, with this game. Well, mm -hmm. Ludicelis did get the first four points. That whenever I draw this mm -hmm. tile, it's super reassuring when this happens. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, how? Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you do with the with the simple curve if you draw it uh, as the first tile? Um, uh, do you put it and take the road, or put it uh, below? Always take the road. Basically, always take the road. Yeah. Y my approach is. Um, On the first move, always put a meeple, like no matter what. And also, I think mm -hmm. this is the better move rather than the putting curve back. Although, uh, from top players, I've I've seen all three moves. There, are even a few two top players who put the curve below. But mm -hmm. my, but my, you know, eight hundred elo logic is this: is that if you put the curve below, you get zero points. But if you but if you meeple the road, you get two points. Two points more than zero points, therefore it's a better move. Sometimes at the start of the game it's really as, as, as simple as that. The only problem is sometimes you will get blocked and it's kind of a little bit difficult to play if you, if you meeple small roads mm -hmm. early. And remember in the game with Labanactis? Yep. When, um, when uh, he... I mean, I assume Labanactis has to be... <laughs> has to be Muzacil. I mean, who, who else does this stuff? Um, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you just uh, put here, you just have to be like really good at anticipating what can happen later on to justify this move. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe if you're just starting out, if you're an intermediate player, and even though, yes, I agree that meepling a road meeple on your first move is better, like it's plus EV, um, you're expecting to win more games. If you are not sure, if you're not comfortable how to follow up, maybe don't do it. It's okay. Like, just just play the game that you're comfortable with, and maybe in a practice game you can experiment and try out and see what happens. Because the thing yep. is, like, not meepling the road on your first move does not necessarily lose you the game. It's like it's just a little bit less ambitious. So that's the equivalent of playing D three instead of D four as your first move mm -hmm. in chats. It's like it doesn't yeah, lose it's just know. a little bit mm -hmm. less. All right, mm -hmm. let's go back to the game. Well, nothing's really much has happened here. Some battles for the city. Uh, Mad can with the better probabilities over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw an interesting move. So uh, somehow Mad can uh, played the uh, the simple triangle, connecting to the city with one point, and afterwards just uh, let. Uh, uh, Luda Celis connect or attack uh, the city. I wouldn't have to have done it. Maybe expanding the city on the right. Yeah, that's uh, true. And and talking about the situation on the right, do you put Meeple on that? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that one, that tile with free city and uh, a field. Uh, I, I would in say, in yeah. this situation, in this situation, not in others. In this situation, no. In mm -hmm. some situations, yes. Yeah, of course. <laughs> In this situation, I, I also avoid or yeah, try to not to, to place it here. Well, maybe let's let's explain this to our viewers a little bit. So, why would you not at place here, and why sometimes you would? So uh, there is only a two-point city with uh, two uh, ends open. Let's say so it's not uh, um, yeah very close to be uh, yeah to be close. Let's say <laughs> and. Uh, it doesn't make sense to invest one meeple in one point just to block or to try to you know, connect in the end to a two-point tile, right? This is my uh, way of thinking in this uh, situation. Yeah, yeah, it, it makes it makes absolute perfect sense. Um, so the, I, I also kind of th th think the same way. Um, so also the thing with p putting the meeple it kind of depends a lot whether that's the start of the end of the game. So at the end of the game, you wouldn't put the meeple because it's just too few tiles remaining to complete the city. At the start of the game, while there's still a lot of tiles that the red can compete the city with, both players were already quite low on meeple, so that like wouldn't be the most high priority spot. And even if the red draws the tiles, they were likely to go elsewhere, like over here. In the mm -hmm. meantime, by the way, Matkan did a good job with the city because he did this move, blocking, well, sometimes mm -hmm. somewhat constricting the square in case Ludocelis wins the city, and then he also mm -hmm. managed to draw um, the tile that suits mm -hmm. him. Ooh. And, uh, yeah. and, Lud yeah, and uh, he was very ins inspired, let's say, Ludocelis, so he played the, the free city with, uh, with Road, 
uh, and uh, yeah, Madkin had the simple cap in uh, in hand, and he could uh, have blocked uh, two meeples, two red meeples. But he somehow was inspired. I mean, Ludes Celis was inspired and played and uh, took three points. Of course, having the chance to connect, uh, yeah, giving the chance to connect for Madkin. But it was just inspiration. So sometimes in, in Carcassonne, you need also inspiration, I believe. <laughs> so just oh. to feel that your opponent has uh, the blocking tile or the right tile in hand and just play against uh, all statistics, <laughs> I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a really interesting point that you bring up. So when I came to my first world championship in person, uh, mm -hmm. That was in 2013, like b way before the post-COVID Carcassonne boom. Um, mm -hmm. But still, there were already quite a few strong players. And I played my first game with the then world champion, Martin Moizic. Yeah. And it ended up being a tie. It was like a, probably my most interesting game of the championship. There was a big imbalance of many monasteries versus the field. Uh, but the point is, for the first like 20 moves... The way he was playing, I felt he just knew what tiles I had. Because, okay, I thought, oh, I got this crossroads. I'm going to now score this many points. Bam, no. He just prevents it, prevents it, prevents it. I was like... Mm -hmm. So, I, but, but of course, it's not just blind luck. There's inside a lot of that. There's, he was thinking that I had a high probability of joining, of getting this tile. Mm -hmm. so he so he anticipated that. Um, yeah, yeah, so he's definitely kind of uh, my favorite from the old school players. And mm -hmm. he's he's still in this championship. That's great. Like ten, almost ten years after, and uh, you know one exactly. of the one of the top rated players on board game arena. I don't think uh, not many players uh, can 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 boast to this kind of history. Um, yeah, so you do need to, to have this sort of insight to win games. Uh, in the meantime, now it looks like Ludacelis is slowly mm -hmm. starting to take over the game because the start looked well from Mad Can and also I liked mm -hmm. his playing maybe a little bit better than what Ludicelis did. Um so yep. he will end up getting the pets uh, uh, so plus five over here. So this means that Ludicelis is only real at minus four. And also this a uh, field meeple for Mad mm -hmm. Can's not looking particularly juicy now because this yep. field has very limited expansion potential unless Mad Can draws a monastery, which means that it's his Ludicelis' interest to prevent that for as long as possible. And I see he's kind of doing that, right? Yep. Oh too yep. late. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a small field anyway, so it was an early farmer. I don't know if uh, it uh, it worth invested uh, in that. I don't know. Let's see. But you see that Meeple uh, put uh, on the right upper corner on that one point tile. Yeah, for uh, Madcan, uh, the green one. Yeah, that's one. That one. Yet, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's 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 now coming to bite him real bad. Uh, mm -hmm. well, it may... Exactly. Oh, the, the, that's interesting. So uh, instead of expanding the field, Matt can chose to take mm -hmm. two points, and probably I might have done that too as well. Like two points are two points, and and also if if you get one more city in your in your field, you only get three more points. So it's not that big of a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Now Matt can chooses the city on the right just to block uh, the connection. Oh, yeah. The cell is uh, yeah. Interesting. So Ludicelis doesn't go I for the 50-50. Because mm -hmm. he, he, so yep. he, he could have put it here and constricted it. Mm -hmm. And also, I do, I'm, I'm not a fan of this move. Like, if you're going to do something like this, if you don't go for the 50-50, at least turn the city cap downwards. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 so yeah. that the opponent has fewer blocking tiles. Well, the amount of blocking tiles could be like roughly the same. I think it's fewer because many of the one, two, three, four... Yeah, fewer blocking tiles because four of the city caps are already out, right? So if mm -hmm. you put a city cap over here, it's it's low probability thing. And even if your opponent gets gets something to block over here, at the very least, you would add points to your city by doing this. So, yeah, yeah I agree. In the meantime, the field on the left corner, yeah, just expands. <laughs> now it's uh, bigger than uh, the early one uh, taken by Metken. So, yeah, becomes interesting. Yeah, interesting. And so this means that if Ludacelis gets a city with a mm -hmm. rose and throws in a city meeple, that will be game for him pretty much. Well, he'll equalize. Yeah. This is why Madcan's trying really. Yeah, that's game. Here you game. go. Here you go. <laughs> that's game. <laughs> here you go. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, hmm. 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 
Yeah, it's uh, I, I I don't see like it's very difficult for to to come back from this. I I know it's it it looks roughly equal, but here it's plus six, so Ludicellis is already at plus four. Um, over here it's plus five, so Ludicellis is already at plus nine. Here it is minus four, so Ludicellis is plus plus five again. Actually, it's plus six because of this guy. But this city has still expansion potential and there are two tube shape extenders um, still in the game and Ludicellis would love to draw a tile like this and place it over here and then mm -hmm. connect and then end up with a bigger city on this side than on this side. Um, Mad can with an... I don't know what this move was. Well, actually, what do you do with your Mad can? It's really hard to recommend anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe he tried to block uh, taking the yeah the longer road by uh, by the cellist at some point. Maybe at the end of the game, you try to prevent taking the road or yeah expanding it. Could be, could be. Um, and also, Ludicellis is ur well. Matt can urgently needs Meeple if he wants to reattack. No, ah, hmm. Ludicellis unambitious. Turn this down. Try to eat up this. Uh, uh, this is this mm -hmm. city cap. I really like this technique when you have cities, and then all you all you're just trying to do is sort of um, kind of go. So you have like a small blocked city, but there is some rogue city tiles lying around, and then you just like crawl like some kind of animal to gobble up these city tiles, and you end up with a ten ten point city or something like that. So there, <laughs> it's it's a very useful strategy to win. By the way, um, also in, in private chats, I get asked a lot who my co-commentator is. Yes, I sort of announce you as a like uh, a special guest because I wanted to be, for it to be a surprise. Uh, but uh, with us today is um, Bogdan Kurkan, uh, also known as Game Over, also uh, known as um, the captain of the Romanian team this year. Oh, by the way, um, so while we're talking about the game, please feel to ask uh, all kinds of other Carcassonne-related, or maybe even non-Carcassonne-related uh, questions to our guest. So if you don't mind answering them, or or or, or, of or, course or, not. To, or, or to me, or to me. Oh, okay, nice. Mm -hmm. Krish Kautis is over here, Edjus Kautis is over here. These are uh, my teammates. Oh, the thing, at the start of the stream, I actually asked, uh, like, well, to talk a little bit th about the fact that uh, you and Mariam are brothers in the same team. So our team also has Carcassonne brothers. In fact, it's uh, half of our team is from the same family. It's three brothers and one cousin. <laughs> Whoa, that's cool. That's cool. I didn't know it. And three of them, okay, nice. each of these three brothers has been national champion once. <laughs> Whoa, didn't know it. Make it public. <laughs> yeah, I should. Uh so okay. yeah and also we should we should line up we should make make sure that that's like uh that's our the, the, the match latvia romania just turns into family feud it's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's soon anyway it's uh, end of next week it will be interesting yeah okay so let's see how the game developed in the meantime yeah i mean I, so... nothing much really happened because like players don't have meeples they're just dumping tiles um mm -hmm. so i they... think yeah sorry you were about to say something yeah, uh, they are, they want to get some easy points, but uh, there were not uh, no or small chances to to get those. Only a crossroad uh, was drawn, so yeah, they tried to get easy points, but not successful. <laughs> That's why I, I wanted to to say. Yeah, and such such an interesting close position because you see, uh, Ludicellis draw this drew this crossroads, um, mm -hmm. and there was just nowhere to score two points. Uh, mm -hmm. So exactly. I so that's why it's often in these close positions, you not only score points, but you also prevent your opponent from scoring points. So for example, Matkan, um, I think it was Matkan who placed the tile over here, just to prevent mm -hmm. Ludicellis from adding yeah. one more city to his. Mm -hmm. What was the Ludicellis? Why not take uh, two points? Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he tried to defend the field. So I, I don't know how many curves are in the game still. But uh, yeah, that field was uh, attackable, let's say, and I he tried see. to defend it. But the thing is, like, I, I'd say this doesn't matter because 
So if Mad can attacks the field, he spends a meeple. Okay, he gets this 12 points. As soon as he does that, Ludicelis just uh, gets some compensation points uh, elsewhere. Because the problem for Mad can is that getting sharing mm -hmm. these 12 points is not enough, whilst Ludicelis has one more meeple to compensate for this. Um, mm -hmm. So I would just get the two points and make sure that my opponent um, is not able to take the field. Also, if Madkan wants, wants to attack this field while well, there is this space over here, which is probably going to use, and so he, he might still get these 12 po points anyway, in which case this tile is going to be wasted. The thing is, in a close position like this, quick points are very, very, very valuable. It's um, You have to have a really good um, reason to say no to quick points. Okay, in the meantime, it was 2-1 in favor of Spain. How is our... So so this duel is going on, and will be decided in just a couple of tiles. How is Euclid doing? Let me check. So, uh, he lost, and Spain has already 3-1. Oh, okay. Um, so, like, it's, yeah. so it's going to be not much of a nail biter at the very end uh but i think it's, it's probably likely to be three two so it's gonna be a close match after all uh which is a good thing anyway so congratulations spain spain on winning uh definitely well deserved in the games that we saw also mad can put a good fight against ludicelis i have to say uh well i may I also he hasn't lost still like i might i might mis have miscalculated things I, I i think he lost now but uh we'll see this in just a couple of tiles um, yeah. yeah, what Tsokatero was actually quite convincing. Um, so I haven't played with that player much, but um, definitely looking to see how they do in other games. Also, yeah, a lot of a lot of decisive games anyway. So it was a yeah a tight match. Yeah, and generally like, this year things things seem to be closer than mm -hmm. usual. There are yeah, no small teams anymore. <laughs> you see Belarus, for example, again, this, yeah, this example, so... Good, so no, not so much happened in the meantime. Ludacelis just took the city of six points. Yeah, maybe it was yeah. uh, a good choice, but... Uh, and yeah, Medkin the last five points. Then I think it is plus not plus seven for the Celis, right? Uh, something like this. Yeah. Oh, plus three only. Okay. Plus three. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. Uh, interesting. Yeah, very tough game. But actually, I, w I was right about this. So the thing is, um, so uh, so Mad Can scored five points, right? So before that, he was at minus mm -hmm. eight. Uh, if Ludicelis uh, puts this stuff over here, he's already at plus ten. So this means mm -hmm. that he just scores a couple more points, and then he could have guaranteed himself the win without the yeah. field. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I I think kind of Ludicelis sort of deserve deserved this one. Um, as as well, um, maybe this is something that cost Mad Can the mm -hmm. game. Yeah, this yeah, meeple yeah. a little bit ambitious. But in the previous game, I think Mad Can did play um, really well. So it's nice that there was this close match. All right, mm -hmm. so it's, it's two one. Uh, so tell me, uh, so Oscar, this one two zero. Did yes. every other match end up being two one? Uh, I believe so. Let me check it. So Labanactis had to one, so it was decisive, and uh, Tsokanero with Kroikle again decisive game, and this one decisive game, I believe so, yeah. And the fourth one was the fourth one was Euclid also decisive, I believe. Yeah, so quite tight match, but uh, yeah, decided already after four games. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. This is like the the. Quickest match I've seen on Board Game Arena. If we're, <laughs> it's been just an hour. Everything's over, and mm -hmm. despite the fact that most players play three games. So originally I was planning like this: that the match would finish, and then we would immediately go to the Italy-Hungary mm -hmm. game. But they're not start starting for a half hour, so we have an option. I think we can either do something else for for thirty minutes, or take a break and um, rejoin um, at twenty. 
I'll rejoin in 15 minutes or, or 15 mm -hmm. minutes, something like this. What do you think? What, what, what do you say about watching Catalonia against Norway? It's in our group. Oh, it's now? <laughs> And they, yes, it's now, of course. Oh, let's go. Okay, um, let's go. Of course, we should do that. Let me just uh, do a little bit of that. Uh, so who is in Catalonia? Uh, so Sanglar, Sanglar won first. Uh, it was uh, actually, no, it was uh, hmm, 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 a tie. I don't know who started that. Uh, Kazum Lola won. This is the old Kazum Meeple. And uh, yeah, Pronom won. Hmm. Also, Danis uh, finished. Uh, it's already 1 0 for Catalonia, as I see. And also, Charoling won against Mogulen, so they have 2 0 already. And uh, yeah, let's see who started the Sengler against uh, Lahuni Badger. And you know what? Um, yeah, yeah, you have Sengler that. started. Oh, so so, mm -hmm. so the Honey Badger won. Yeah, 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 yeah. One with a tie. Okay, that's good. That, that's good. That's interesting. So here's what I'm thinking. Um, so basically, Catalonia on paper looks considerably stronger, right? And they're probably the yep. heavy favorites in this game. Uh, Kasim Lowell is the strongest, so we might have a look at them. They just gonna, I think they, they're gonna show quality Carcassonne. Uh, mm -hmm. In Norway, uh, they didn't line up their uh, Mr. Savastano, who I've had, had quite a high e e LO, but John um, Egil here. Doggy 9? Yeah, they uh, also didn't, didn't mm -hmm. line up yeah. them. Um, I, I, so I don't know. I, against Catalonia, I think you could have tried. Or maybe they just wanted to sacrifice the match against Catalonia and then just try to line up the strongest players against somebody else. So with the new rules... Um, it's it's very interesting how you can choose the the, the lineups and the things that um, come into that. But mm -hmm. let's talk uh, about it just in a second. Let's ch let's choose a game to play. I suggest we can either jo go for John e uh, John Eagle e versus Dennis mm -hmm. VH because I think it would be quite a close match in terms of the skill it's, level. It's finished. It's finished. Dennis uh, Dennis won to zero. zero. I believe. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Um, or we can. Uh, go for I played Singular. again. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. It's, it's I just the delay so again, we keep uh, talking over each other. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, I played again John Eagle this uh, this uh, year in the World uh, Championship in Essen in the fourth round. So he was the Norway uh, yeah, player, one of the Norway's players. Good. Oh. Um, I would say that we can go to Pronom or Kasum Lola. Mm -hmm. So, uh, or... Uh, so a uh, Sengler in the meantime lost. So Sengler lost with a tie, and uh, the second one was won by Norway, by Lahuni Badger. So there is, uh, yeah, uh -huh. two so to it's one. So one, one, right? Wait. Uh, two to one. Two oh. to one, I would say. So so Charoling won, right? Yes, Charoling won two again. Uh, yeah, two to two zero. Yeah. Okay. And we still have uh, we still have Kazum Lola playing against uh, Iris and uh, Pronom. Fable Jim Targaryen. Um, what happened here? Yeah. Uh, pronom, pronom one. So Catalonia has three <laughs> to one now. <laughs> uh, things are happening quite uh, fast. Yeah, again. And also, this means that we're definitely looking at this game. Uh, yeah. So. It's... Huh. Well, first of all, congratulations for Catalonia for, mm -hmm. for the, I'd say, expected victory. Uh, but, you know, even when you're strong on paper, you still have to deliver. It's not always a given, as we saw with Czech Republic, as we saw with the UK. Um, so good that they sort of managed to assert their status. And Norway won at least one duel, so it's, at, at, you know, at the very least, like, n n not going to be shameful. <laughs> um, yeah. So what are we having here? Uh, how does this position look to you, Bogdan? Let me check it shortly. Well, can you can Second, see it? I was looking to... Yeah, now I can see it. I, I, I was checking the, the results. So, um, from the yeah, score table, there's um, close. We have um, an early meeple uh, on the field, but it's quite, uh, I don't know, it's not that um, expandable, I would say. So it's quite close, the field. Let's see how it will develop. I would say it's tight uh, so far. Maybe, yeah, Kasum Lola, a bit of advantage. With easy points now. 
uh, that's yeah it's very interesting so uh, he yeah wanted to do two easy points again uh, yeah and not uh, closing one uh, one uh, head of the road or one end of the road what would you do alexei taking two easy points or uh, closing one end <laughs> I know what, as greedy as I am, <laughs> I think I'm more a fan of closing here. Because even though, so this city is not something that you start for completion necessarily, because it's seven points, you just keep growing it. Still having the off chance of completion is quite nice. So I would maybe not necessarily um, put it under attack too much. That would be my logic. Mm -hmm. And also this road, I'm going to need a meeple back at some point. I'm not sure which side I would end it. I'm, I could do this. I mm -hmm. could do this. Um, actually, I would be more likely to do this, even though that's also adding points to your opponent. Uh, when you're in this situation, where the the component the, your opponent controls your road meeple with his monastery yep. meeple, you want to get out of that situation as soon as possible. Yeah. Because it's just yep, not yep, advantageous yep. for you. And there's some curves like over here and over here that you can. Maybe do something useful with your role as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but overall, I think until recently, Casimir, good move by Iris, by the way, preparing a block. Mm -hmm. Watch out, Casimir needs to turn it the other way ASAP. I don't think mm -hmm. there's any other acceptable move in this situation. Um, I think if Iris manages to join over here, I should. I I quite like their position. You know, this meeple, yeah, may be a little bit premature, and now Iris also constrict their fields a little bit. Interesting mm -hmm. move. I mean, if you... What gonna... would you do? Uh, uh, I would just score two points somewhere here. Mm -hmm. um, or, I mean, if you insist on putting it over here, then, I don't know, meeple it. <laughs> Risky, mm -hmm. but it th doesn't matter. Also, by the way, when you're playing against stronger opponents, uh, it's okay to risk a little bit more, and when you're playing against weaker opponents, it, it, you should risk a little bit less. Custom Lola here is the, fav the heavy favorite, and um, I think you know if you want to win against somebody who's 600 plus rated, you just gotta try score more yep. points. You know, maybe the curve comes yep. soon. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now Custom Lola tries the uh, yeah the blocking. Yeah, but. Uh... <laughs> It's quite risky, right? Because there is still one tile, of course, it's a little bit reckless, but there is still one tile with uh, three cities and uh, and a road. And you can just attack and uh, take over. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. if I were Iris, for example. Yeah. And if I were Iris, I would totally do that. It doesn't matter if mm -hmm. it's only 50%. It's 50% for mm -hmm. a game-defining yep. advantage. And also, the reason why I wouldn't do this move of Custom Lola, as mm -hmm. Custom Lola, is because... The Monastery is the worst blocking tile in the whole deck. Like, it has the lowest blocking probability. So, basically, statistically, you're, the next tile that you're, draw, that you're going to draw will be better for blocking than the Monastery. So you just gotta, you just gotta put the Monastery somewhere else, wait one more move, then block. Um, block, yeah. Mm -hmm. Agree. So for 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 uh, for our uh, viewers, let me just explain a little bit. So depending on which side um, you turn, the blocking probability changes. So if you turn it with a field tile um, like this, then the probability of successful block is the lowest. And now actually we saw that Iris managed just to save um, the city mm -hmm. over here. Well, sort of save because only there's one uh, one of these guys left. But still, save it, yeah. Uh, then if you turn it with a, if if you, if you have a straight line if you turn it that side then the probability is higher um, and then it's the highest if you block with a city like if you put something like that over here and it's actually already uh, much harder to save um, yeah that will be the idea well now uh, custom lol is still having I think a decent advantage with this road over here with the, mm -hmm. the red meeple being quite sad, yep. with mm -hmm. this guy being constricted to 50%. Although, if Iris manages to draw this tile very quickly, I think they have an option of taking this 9-point field. It's yeah, 6-point, but uh, yeah, it will develop in 9. It will be 6-point at, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, at the absolutely. first glance. Yeah. 6 points, 9 on the next move. Mm -hmm. 9 um, next move, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
but you give the chance to the opponent to to take the other side of the field so this would be the next move for the opponent iris just drew the triangle with road let's see if uh, he places or she places um yeah farmer do it come on field let's people. go <laughs> yes <laughs> well done. yeah just just happened yeah so I, I I can't say necessarily that, that I'm rooting for Norway. I'm kind of I want sort of for the best player to win, but um, I like close matches. So maybe it's three mm -hmm. two. It's a little bit more interesting. And now Iris can reattack this field. It's worth doing this. Bam yep. or finish the monastery and and take this field over here. This actually might be better. Huh. Okay, attacking the road. Okay. I mean, it's not it's not bad. It's like you just don't have the thing is like it's it's just a little bit too ambitious because Iris ha wants to do all kinds of things, but uh, she just doesn't have the meeples for that. That's why maybe I like doing this a little bit more because um, you take the meeple back, so you do it with tempo. You drop um, a, a field meeple on this field. You don't give the field to your opponent. And yeah, this is what happens now because mm -hmm. now. Mm, Castle Lola blocks two meeples versus one if this stuff gets connected. And also, if Iris had a field meeple now over here, she could have scored four more points and this would have become a nine-point field. And actually, this would have given her a fighting chance in the game. And then later, she could have attacked this road. Like, this road is not going to go away necessarily. And even if it does, it was there to offset the monastery anyway. Yep. So I think Iris missing on some chances um, to win. That will be my assessment. Yeah, agree. So that road, the road was not decisive in this game, not uh, in this moment at least. <laughs> exactly. So let's see, simple cap with curve, okay, connecting the roads, putting also a city on the field, uh, yeah, potential city. Yeah, and now looks like an actual city as well. Mm-hmm. Well, that tile that Iris would like to draw is the monastery with the road to maybe unify these two fields mm -hmm. and like yeah. expand rapidly. And then with the next yeah. tile, com complete the city and drop a second field meeple. Now that will be a fighting chance. And then maybe also draw the last remaining finisher over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so Kazum Lola should take that uh, field uh, yeah, right away. I would say. Yeah, <laughs> probably. It's nine points. It's it's mm -hmm. juicy. No, I, th I think mm -hmm. it's okay to wait for the next tile. Like if there's, again, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But now, now, I think you just have now, to. Now, yes, now it's, uh, yeah, it's the moment to take it. And you have uh, the fourth potential uh, city on the field. So it's just, yeah, morphing. Oh, okay. and and also you block. Ooh, timely, yep. timely! You block this stuff. Mhm. Mm and he was the monastery, right? Exactly. With the road. <laughs> yeah, the monastery with the road. So yeah. we're just like one mm -hmm. tile away from massive expansion. Mhm. Mm exactly. But yeah. the thing is, still, I think this move over here um, that Iris did uh, was one of the de decisive factors in the game because if we just look at this position uh, and at the draw over here. Uh, she would have had this nine-point field eventually, and now mm -hmm. he, sh he, sh he would have connected this field, and he would ha she would have two meeples in an 18-point mm -hmm. field, and that would be probably enough to win, actually. Yeah, a very good move by Kasim Lola with uh, the last uh, tile. So, uh, yeah, he blocked the the chance to yeah get to the field on the left with yeah. the one... One, uh, yeah, road monastery. And also, the second one. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Iris gets the 50 percenter, so at, at least she's going to have the meeple. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I'm, I'm just starting to assume that it's a she, uh, just, 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 for, just for no reason. Uh, but uh, <laughs> j j j just, just to... <laughs> yeah, agree. Oh, actually, we have a pro profile photo over here uh, as well. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's a she in, uh, in the description, so... Yeah. Oh, okay, I, I, I didn't see that as well. So then, perfect, at least there's a... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely happy that there are like, slightly more female players these days in, 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 in Carcassonne. Mm-hmm. Agree. 
So somehow Iris needs the fields, the field at least. Yeah, and actually, like Iris is not doing this badly because well, okay, she's minus six, and then she's minus. Uh, she has a smaller field, right? So she's minus mm -hmm. nine. But if she manages to block off this guy, and by the way, this would be a permanent block, but oh, based on what's remaining. So this stuff must go over here. Iris must draw the one remaining tile like this that fits over here. Mm -hmm. And then that will be um, enough yeah, to compensate. Agree. agree, yeah. Triangles are out with road. Let's see. There is anyway a chance to to get the second red meeple on the field, right? Um, mm -hmm. For the mm -hmm. oh, here you go. But for Kasim Lola, the monastery. Ooh, okay. Yeah, okay. That's, nice. that's a good move. That's a good move. Attacking two fields at the same time. That's, that's mm -hmm. strong. Yeah. Although there are are some situations um, how you can do a little bit. So let's say if Kasim Lola doesn't manage to connect over here and if this stays unconnected, Iris with her last tile might just connect these two fields and make mm -hmm. this meeple worthless. So, yeah. and given that I think there are road, a lot of road tiles are already... Oh, ah, no, Kasim Lola. Okay, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. No, it. yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then this is over, yeah. Yep. But anyway, that was a noble attempt to the 50-50. I think uh, Iris kind of did what she had to do. Yep. Agree. But yeah, Kasim Lola played more careful this game, I believe. So um, a lot of uh, optimal moves, I would say. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say so. And uh, Iris had chances, I think. So mm -hmm. she 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 yep. she could have won. She could have won. I'm not sure. Is if is there a way how Iris still wins this? So let's say if this city is not completed, if he somehow joins this field, if she, um, yeah. Hmm, interesting move by Kasim Lola. Connecting there, okay. Hmm. But still, yeah, I don't know if it's uh, not enough. Yeah, yeah. And now, I mean, Iris needs to come up with something crazy. Uh, what about this connection over here? Are, no, there's still no guys that fit over here. What about the connection from here? No, there's still... Mm. Let me check. <laughs> oh, one is remaining, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, seems so. One, two. Mm. Oh, I think it actually might be blocked by the screen. Let me just move this a little bit over here. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you put this curve over here and like on the outside path, there is a tile that would connect the red meeple into the field and would give um, the red meeple nine more points which is a lot of points mm, choosing to connect the oh uh, she's out of time i see right oh yeah so, so it's a yeah loss. she needs yeah she needs to concede oh no i don't i don't think I she know. does uh, because she, uh, she said she had a mouse problem so um that would be uh, like if you have an unforeseen circumstances you're allowed to mm -hmm. lose some time like if you lose an internet connection that's also considered acceptable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Iris can connect the field if, uh, of course, she would want to do it, right? Yes, of course. But then this big field would be tied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think she's just short on time or something. Mm -hmm. But basically what she would need to do drastically is like attack this field and then connect mm -hmm. this. Then connect, yeah. Mm -hmm. Agree. Not too many tiles remaining. I didn't count to see what uh, what's there, but um, yeah, there are not so many chances to, to grab the field. By the way, I already see somebody in our chat is already rooting for Team Italy. Uh, <laughs> well, just just in a few in minutes. <laughs> five minutes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. But this one, yeah, yeah, I think this is a prob probably a good move. Uh, I assume Casimir mm -hmm. kind of calculated what is needed. Yeah. For her to win the game. Shall Casimir will go for, go for five points? Uh, are there still uh, straight lines in the game? Because uh... hmm, let's see a bit. So fields are almost equal, right? Big city equal. Custom Lola two points there. Now taking five points. Oh, still the road. Here's yeah. the road. Of course, Not... with four points. It's so, um, all the it's tight. Are tight. Oh, <laughs> ah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Uh, yeah. But even though I don't know if. Uh, yeah, on, also without the city, I would say that Kasim Lola would have won. Well, um, Iris did have the nine nine points for the road, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Actually, mm -hmm. without the city, I think it would have been a tie. Let's see. So Kasim Lola got uh, yeah. Let's see how many points it was. Anyway, tied. So in the end. Yeah, plus plus five exactly. So plus five, uh, yeah. So she got these five, so five, five. Mm -hmm. on the last move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, of course, but with that tile you can do easily other points, right? So one, one more point you can do because it, because the custom law didn't have any meeples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Anyway, very very good game. Mm -hmm. That was a nice close mm -hmm. one. So four one Catalonia wins. Uh, still respectable performance for Nor Norway. Managed to keep it close uh, with somebody four hundred points. Uh, 400 po f LO points high rated. Points. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, it was um... uh, yeah, really tight. Good. So two minutes to go for uh, Italy against Hungary. Yeah, of this one, oh, this one's probably like the, I don't know, I'd say the match of the week almost because we have two strong mm -hmm. teams, really close team. I really don't know who the, who the favorite is. Well, certainly uh, Italy has uh, the so they Mm -hmm. More devoted yeah. fans in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this helps. So Italy won uh, in the last uh, World Championship 5-0. Uh, uh, of course, score might be <laughs> uh, not very realistic. What happened? Yeah, against what happened in uh, in the duels. But the first duel was won by Hungary. Uh, the first match, I believe, in the first uh, World Championship. So they met twice uh, already, Hungary uh -huh. and Italy. We as Romanian uh, Romanians know both of them, <laughs> so we we played a lot against uh, Hungary. All the time we won, uh, yeah, um, just uh, with a bit, and we lost against Italy last uh, uh, last World Championship. So yeah, there were tight matches. I expect that uh, also this evening will be a nice uh, clash. Let's say. Absolutely. I, I will be surprised if we see a result other than 3-2 um, mm -hmm. either way. Um, so I, we have one minute to pick uh, the first match to watch. And maybe I can I can say what I know and you can say what you know. So I know Siegfried, who is the captain, is going to be pretty strong. Uh, I've already yeah. featured him on his channel, like not in the best uh, light. I probably showed like the most unluckiest game that he ever had uh, against uh, Vladimir <laughs> Kovalev. Uh, so maybe you know we can just slightly like support so support him to compensate for that. <laughs> Mo Sapal is also very strong. Um, mm -hmm. And then yeah. the other players, I don't. So do you know the other players on the Hungarian lineup? Uh, yes, I know that Zabadeus joined the, the World Championship this year in Essen. Also Mo Sapal, so they were the Hungarian players there. Siegfried, of course, very strong. Uh, they somehow chose that uh, yeah, Vizeke is not playing this evening. I know that he's also strong mm -hmm. uh, with a good uh, percentage. So they are strong anyway. So we, we had uh, tough times against the uh, Hungarian team. But for Italy, I was surprised that James is not playing. He has uh, more than 600 ELO. So he's not in the lineup this evening. Also, Paulino is not in the team. So some surprises uh, for Italy. Paulino was the fourth uh, in 2019, I believe, in, in World Championship. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paulino 87, I believe. Nice. It's the nickname. 
So from from these players, I know the Jack, who's who's, who's really strong. Julio, mm -hmm. who's also strong, and um, Antonio Cataldo, I think, was this year representing. Yes, the Antonio. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you heard of Akatosh ninety five and Lambe? No, no, but I checked them, and Lambe has a good percentage. So sixty three in two thousand games, it's a, quite a thing, I would say. So it's really good. It will be interesting against Sieg Siegfried. So let's go for this one, maybe. Let's go for Siegfried. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's go for Siegfried. You have some, uh, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Something nice. to give back to, to Siegfried, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of this, uh, like, do you have sort of a preference in this game? Will you be rooting for anybody, or shall we just be impartial? <laughs> I would be impartial. I, I like both teams. They are both strong, and, uh, yeah, they show both a strong game or play. So do I. So, so do I, see. actually. Maybe in this game I will be like slightly rooting for Zikri because of lessons, uh, because <laughs> of reasons above. But in other duels, mm -hmm. um, uh, well, okay. if whatever happens, happens. So, yeah. So Zikri does have the advantage in Elo, close to seven hundred. But I think he he had plus more than seven hundred at some point. Yeah. And um, as you said, yeah, Lambe pretty pretty strong already over um, mm -hmm. over five hundred. Yep. But you mentioned interesting thing that there are some surprises on the lineup, and I think a lot of that has to do with the new rules that you have to line yeah. up every player. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Um, uh, because th th there's like a lot of strategy involved there. Okay, so do you do the best players now, or do you save the best player for the best team, or do you maybe gambit and accept a loss against a very good team so that you have your optimal lineup for the more tougher matches? Mm -hmm. And uh... Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a discussion here about the strategy, how to deal with lineups, of course. But you should never underestimate a team. This is, uh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Like if, if Important, I so yeah. with, with this lineup, I'm really not sure who's stronger even on paper. Like, so in, in this duel, Siegfried has the edge, but in the other duels, probably the Italians had the had the edge. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I can't really predict much. Also, uh, but to clarify the rules, the way I understand them, that if you don't line up all your um, all your eight players, you get like. It, it, you get one victory point less, so it's as if you lost a match. So the punishment is pretty severe. Mm. But one point uh, where it's one point in the final, um, yeah, uh, setup or one point uh, in the difference of the duels. Because if you read the the rules, it's not clear what kind of point you lose. <laughs> oh, I understood that it was one point not in the duel, but like. So let's yeah, say I, for, for a victory in a match overall, you get one big point, and you lose that one big point. Okay. So basically, it's as if you lost a whole match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then it's uh, yeah, it's important. Somebody in chat said that uh, they want uh, on, yeah, he wants uh, Akatosh at some point. So maybe we can also move uh, to that game. At, uh, yeah, I think we could. We, we, sometimes we could, we could look at this. Um, we could make this our next yeah. game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe if we could just monitor with one eye what's happening over there. Yes. Um, so, so if you're in the chat, Mauro, can you can you tell uh, more about so who Akatosh actually is? Because I didn't see them in the last um, lineup of um, Italian's team in the World Championship. Oh, um, sp speaking about those those rules, by the way. Um, so I, that's probably something where we should ask clarification from the uh, from the organizers because I am. It, it just changes your approach to the ch the championship um, so much as a team captain, where you're gonna select the players as well. Um, but I would expect the interpretation to be pretty strict because, as far as I know. Um, these rules have been made with the purpose of getting as many people as possible um, mm -hmm. the opportunity to play at the highest level competitively. Yeah, and there is a nice proposal from Lucky God. <laughs> so uh, he proposes to replace this rule by uh, yeah banning the same player from playing three games in a row. <laughs> so yeah, play two games, then yeah just uh, take a break. And afterwards, you are allowed to to play again. Oh, huh, that's interesting. very interesting. Let me just work with it. Oh, math of that. 
Uh, it's, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be actually very, very similar. Yeah. So there is a big fight for a big city in this game, Alexei. Yeah, looks to now, be uh, almost yeah. tied, yeah. right? Yeah, Siegfried seems to be very interested in that city. Now, hmm, oh, here's the ooh. title. Ooh. Mm, dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if I would have done that as Lambe, actually. Because um, you're sort of, I mean, you, you, you're kind of blocking, but you're also bu- oh, building. Although, if I think about it, this move was probably okay, because... Zeke drew only the one. last, he has the last available the last. tile! Oh, yep. lucky yep. persons! Uh... So, easy to block now, only <clears throat> two pieces left. Okay, oh. try it now. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now becomes very interesting. Or... Let's see. So if, yeah, if Siegfried closes this one, then it's a GG, I would say. It, definitely, he's already at plus 13. Yeah. Well, yes, yes. yes, yes. <clears throat> there are no chances to, to recover from that. But the Let's reason see. what Siegfried is thinking is that which mm-hmm. way do you turn How this to put city? It, yeah. exactly. What's the highest exactly. probability of completion? Mm-hmm. And he goes for this way. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. sure. Why not? I would maybe have gone for the other way. Mm, just because it seems to me that there are more tiles remaining that fit over here rather than fit over here. So if you just look, starting tile, starting tile. Yeah, only... Although, yeah, it's close, it's close. It's close, yeah. Still a lot of chances. And also... Also, cap is for crossroad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and also you get two extra points. I always empathize with yeah. the idea of getting two <laughs> extra points. Just the cherry doesn't... on top. Uh, it doesn't matter in this situation, the two extra points, but yeah, it's a bonus. Uh-huh. So the uh, Mauro in the chat is telling that um, Akatosh95 is a is a, f- a filmmaker for their, uh, for their day job, and um, they started quite recently with Carcassonne, so we're going to have a com- complete newcomer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Siegfried. Let's see what happens now. So Siegfried with a simple curve. Yeah, probably you want to start blocking this city over here. Mm-hmm. Although you might be super tempted into taking this six point and then later even more point troll if you just go there with the meeple and do this. But it might be just a little bit too ambitious because you already have one road and it would be yep. quite useful to block this. <clears throat> Agree, but like if he still does this, it, it's it's not a mistake. It's an it's an okay move too. I, yeah, I I, I, I just try. I just so what are you saying? <laughs> I would try to to block the big city uh, if I were Siegfried. Um, yeah, at well, this so moment. Would I. I think he's thinking which side. Yeah, that that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's also what I would have done as well, as, as well. Okay. Monastery in time. This is good. Without... Oh, without mm, a people because he didn't have any people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. Oh, now, as Siegfried, do you continue blocking or do you just grab yes. the roads? I would... No, I would just try to block uh, in the upper corner there. Yeah, probably. No. So On the other not... hand, the road is 10 points, though. 10 points. Mm-hmm. Mm, interesting move now. So there is only one left, is it? Uh, the simple cap with a curve to the left. Yeah, now trying to true. block it. Oh, and mm. Lambe has now a really nice move. Yes, this one. Yes, kind that one. Yeah. Saving two <laughs> meeples at the same time. And also, and if he managed to... to, to, to to do the city, then he'll get the road. So Siegfried mm-hmm. would want to get an, the insurance as soon as possible. Like, um, if he gets a curve, it's almost a must that he must play here. It's going to be a 10-point road, potentially a 12-point road, and you just cannot let your opponent have this. Yeah. So that's why Siegfried is just trying to get his meeple back as soon as possible. And yes, it's correct. Whoa! To... <laughs> oh! Look at that. <laughs> didn't manage in time. Maybe mm-hmm. that's why with this curve, 
I did. I mean, this this wasn't a mistake or anything, but. Mm -hmm. Oh well, you can still tie the road, right? It's, yes, it's something. yes, 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 yes. And you absolutely should. Mm -hmm. Although taking it's off a... the meeple is also tempting, but it's just too many points. Exactly. Hmm. And Lambe just uh, drawing the good tiles for uh, Siegfried for closing the city. Exactly. So this is the second cap with um, yeah crossroad. So uh, I guess uh, Lambe might want to reattack this city yeah, um, exactly. from above. Mm -hmm. From from below, you mean? From um... oh, from from below, yeah, 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 from over here. Oh, but that's a oh. mistake for sure. You don't do that. You just take the road and leave this empty. It's a uh, it's a well known maneuver. So mm -hmm. uh, so Lambe just ended up missing out on two points there, as a result in this situation. But he could have lost the meeple there as well. Well, yeah. so city has been closed. <laughs> yeah, and Siegfried's probably winning this. Although Lambe's field is one, two, three, four, five points, and if if Lambe manages to finish the city on top and then maybe throw in a second meeple, some, yeah. something maybe may as well happen here in this mm -hmm. game. Yeah, agree. So Siegfried probably looking for spots to re-attack this field, and they aren't really good ones. There's this one, which is a bit of a long shot, but it's mm -hmm. not the worst because you can grab four points um, over here and then make it closer. Generally, yeah, but yeah, you can easily block it. Sorry, sorry, it's a it's a delay, and I don't know when you you finish talking. Sorry. Oh, that's yeah, fine. But, I, uh, I, I think basically mm -hmm. it's it's okay for you to talk more and for me to talk less because I tend to talk a lot, a lot, a lot. So just <laughs> whenever you uh, have any thoughts, please feel to share. If anything, like I I I'd rather listen more to you than talk myself. Yeah. So it's it's risky. I said it's risky to to attack from from that point. It's easily yeah. Um, blockable, or how to call it, but yeah, yeah he, he he went for it, so he he took that that field over there. Let's see. And you know what? I like this move uh, because yeah, it's kind of risky; it can be blocked. But this is but this has insurance. First of all, it has the insurance in the form of free points. Second mm -hmm. of all, it has the insurance if you get the monastery tile, you can put it over here and add one more city to your field as well. Um, Third of all, there is some limited but non-zero expansion potential over here uh, if you have a city cap or a triangle and then finish the city over here. And at the end of the game, a six-point field is not that bad. And as we were talking, he's getting closer and closer to connection, and connection mm -hmm. in this case would mean sealing the game. Yeah. So he went for it, Siegfried went for it, very close to connect now. Hmm, interesting. On the field. Yeah, kind of a desperate attempt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But yeah, you can give eight points to, to the opponent for with that. Exactly. And also yeah, and also chances to attack the field um, from the right of that city. That's true. But I think like Lambe has to do something risky at this point. So maybe he's hoping that he's going to get um, the city cap himself and score mm -hmm. the eight points. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, what, what if like what do you do as Siegfried? So basically, if you're Siegfried, you're so far ahead, you have to come up with something that gives you hundred percent chance of winning the game. Like this hundred percent win, it's somewhere. And I think that was it. Just make sure that your opponent doesn't score eight points. Then you mm -hmm. just don't connect this, or it doesn't matter. You try to connect over here. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Make these roads shared. Yeah. And also bringing the... Oh, no, no. Mm. Okay. Um, Interesting. Well, you know, I, I can... T <laughs> Normally, if you have a move that's worth 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, <laughs> 15 points and gives you a meeple back, maybe it's not the worst mm -hmm. move to play. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will bother Siegfried again. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, there is still one crossroad. So, 
that road can be blocked, right? So there is only one crossroad um, in the um, in the game right now, a simple one. Uh-huh. And Siegfried could be just uh, isolated there. That's true. It's curious that uh, Lambe didn't uh, drew, didn't draw any triangle. So Siegfried drew a lot of triangles. Oh, Lambe did actually. Here's here's the ah, mistake. Ah, like, that why, one. Why, oh, why would you ever what? do that? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean. Oh dear. I, yeah, I can see why. Yeah, just close the city. Field me, boy. Lots of points. Yes. Mm-hmm. Here you go. Actually, this is a good move from Siegfried, I think. Uh, because Siegfried has an add plus 26, even if he loses his the field, he has this road here as well. And I think he was just trying to make sure that Lambe does not draw any triangles. And also, because there's one triple city left in the game, it's not so much that Siegfried is, wants to draw this triple city and connect, he wants to make sure that Lambe doesn't draw this triple city and does not finish mm-hmm. the city over here. So I said, yeah, probably, no, Siegfried, I think, was in control but- of the situation the whole time, no? Yeah, but there are no more triangles in the game. So again, they did not count the triangles. <laughs> right? So all 10 are out, right? This is what I counted. Uh, one, two, three. Eight. So yeah, all 10 are out. I don't oh, know. Yeah, of course. Uh, so then if anything, Lambe with this move, he like there was mm-hmm. the only, the, this the separator was the only tile that was remaining, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I guess Siegfried can do something very simple, like, well, need to count the tiles, make sure that this guy doesn't get complete, or maybe uh, grab a three-point field, just continue the road, pretty much anything. Yeah. This is what he tries now. But yeah, it's... Yeah, Lambe can just decrease the point difference, but um, the game was secret for a long time. Well, not now here come four points, if you want to be precise, on either side, depending on your aesthetics. And Zekrit's going to win massively, plus 30 or something? Yeah, there were six points right there, right? It's a field of six. Yep. Yeah, so it's seven points. Huh? It's, it was really oh, fortunate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, and now seven points for Lambe over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And probably three points for Zekrit. Hmm. Last remaining hmm. tile, I think, is a triple city. Oh no, it's already. No, 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 it's already yeah, over. It's yeah. already there. Uh, plus 30, plus 35, something like that. Plus 30. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. congratulations to, to Siegfried. Uh, so, definitely nice to observe one of the uh, games with a more favorable outcome for the Hungarian. Uh, I guess now let's just try and uh, see how the others are doing. Yeah, um, let's let's move to Akatosh because it's uh, yeah it's quite uh, near to the end. And also, I have to say that um, by watching Akatosh, we also get to watch Zebedeus, who was, as you said, uh, in mm-hmm. person in the World Championship. The I think the newcomer for the Hungarian team. So that'll be interesting as well. Uh, okay, big city. Akatosh in the lead on the scoreboard, but the fields look to belong yeah. to Zebedeus. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, blocked uh, meeples for Akatosh on yeah small points. Hmm. Interesting uh, here. Interesting draw. Yeah. As I, well, I, I wonder why Zebedeus scored plus five instead of plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, plus ten. Correct on his field. Mm-hmm. Correct, yeah, correct. I hope this is not decisive. Ah, that's why. Oh, that was smart. 
So he knew, so he made sure that um, Akatosh mm -hmm. doesn't get this tile. Mm -hmm, ah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well done, precision. Well, okay, now, I guess now you get the plus 10, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of uh, easy points uh, at the end for Zapatos. So five there, now again. Yeah. Yeah, probably that's it's uh, it's uh, nine points in the end, so it's uh, six for uh, for the field and plus three for the city. Oh yeah, because there was already one right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's so why it's... massive win for Zebedeus. Well, I mean, if if it just ended, uh, yeah, Akatosh plays uh, says well played. Apparently, that was true. Well, that was certainly tr true for the last two moves because we observed that precision. But I guess let's mm -hmm. let's maybe stick with that duel since they're about to start the game. Um, watch at least one more game from them. Okay, agree. Let's see what happens. I will try to have a look on the others, how they perform. Hmm. Antonio is trying uh, desperately to, to attack the field with the last tiles, so he seems to be behind a lot. Julio won the first game against King Adomino. So it's... Okay, so Julio won, yeah. Yeah, and here Mosopal is um, is winning on, against Antonio Cataldo. But it's not over yet. So we have just three games not that, over. that has finished. Not over. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Two monasteries. Just let me check a bit. So two monasteries, but the fields are mm, quite equal. So, so far it appears that in all duels the rating favorites have been having the upper hand. Yep. Hmm. Marianne just told me that Zebedeus was out of time against uh, Akatosh. If you if you look at uh, if you yeah click a bit and see the result. Yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, Akatosh still has to claim that, right? He has to mm -hmm. kind of say no. Well, or or the team captain has to do it. Ideally, you have to do that within the game itself. Oh yeah, he was out of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that would be unfortunate to throw a game like this, but. Uh, well, on the other hand, maybe because he was out of time, he was able to find the better moves that won him the game. Mm -hmm, to be honest, mm -hmm, with, with the time, actually, I find the time control really, really quick. So what we're playing is the chess, uh, the equivalent of rapid in chess. Like it's, uh, yep. I don't think it's classic of Carcassonne. I mean, it's, it's it's the same for all people, but I've noticed that I, in my first match, I made made some suboptimal decisions just because I didn't have time. Uh, although, I don't think I'm. A particularly slow player or anything. Mm -hmm. So now I do you play uh, chess? Do you play chess? I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I also play. So maybe at some point we meet also in on a chessboard. Nice. We should. Yeah. And also, I've noticed that chess is useful for Carcassonne. You kind of get to um, make a lot of chess analogies. Um... Mm -hmm. Agree. For example, some something from the chess terminology I, I, I like to use is is the concept of tempo. Like when you make a move and then you create a threat with that move so the opponent has to respond instead of getting benefit for himself. It's kind of the, the dynamics of that is similar. Mm -hmm. Agree. Yeah, Mosapal won against Antonio. Quite uh, yeah, easy at the end. Also the Jack uh, won. Uh huh. So it's two two. No. Yeah. So it's two two. But with this duel, we don't really know what the final outcome is. Is right. Yeah. 
Uh, seems out of time, but I don't know what happened there. Oh, okay. So they're saying that uh, he just um, Zibadeus had an internet connection problem, and um, Akatosh has shown good sportsmanship and accepted oh. that. So it's three two in favor of Hungary at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Thumbs up, Akatosh. Yeah, thanks for everybody for contributing. It's very difficult to keep mm -hmm. track of everything. So if you have scores yes. from other boards or anything you want to mention, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. It's uh, a joint everything. Okay, Zebodeo is starting a huge city, just like Siegfried did in the other game. Mm -hmm. Maybe Hungarians have a thing for huge cities. <laughs> now he has the chance to close one. Um... Yeah. yeah. One end. And also, yeah, mm -hmm. prevent the the attacking of the exactly. city. Exactly, that's the, I think that's good. And now the probability mm -hmm. I think is on Zebedeo's side. Well, let's let's actually think about this. So, uh, Akatosh needs uh, there either one of these three tiles, one of these three remaining tiles, and one of those. So there's seven tiles that that are suitable for mm -hmm. Zebedeo's. And there are also there are now more than seven tiles that, that suit for no there's seven tiles that suit for Akatosh right to fit in over here, but yep. there uh, but there's seven tiles for Zebedeus to fit in over here, uh, but th but also he has blocking out. Here you go, <laughs> and with shield with uh, yeah it's a bonus. So yeah, hmm. uh, that was that, that was quick. I don't know. I mean, let, let's watch mm -hmm. this game. Let's see if Akatosh fights back. But mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> how yeah, do you yeah. come back from this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's demotivating to to it's have really this big city, yeah, mm -hmm. at the beginning. Yeah, let's see how it develops. I, I've recently won a game where my opponent scored 24, a 24 point city very early. It's actually mm -hmm. the review of that is in my chat is on my channel. But but the reason I managed to do so is that I kind of managed to gather some compensation in the other side. Like, you know, I just built up some monasteries and did all kinds of other stuff. In this game, though, it was it just happened so quickly that Akatosh didn't even had a chance to, like, just mm -hmm. do anything yet, so... Agree. Now Zebedeus uh, would try to, to block the monastery, maybe. We're taking two easy points and uh, to the right. Yeah. And, yeah, maybe blocking later the monastery. Hmm. Like that. Yeah, which is definitely a mistake. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because hmm. the, 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 also, oh, by the way, also, I, I'd say a mistake. Like, if you're Akatosh, you're massively behind, right? So this means mm -hmm. you have to put your meeples on everything. You see, so you, you already now missed out on seven points. It's, it's huge. You yeah. can't afford that. Yeah. So yeah, may maybe if uh, they watch this game or they can have uh, some sort of an, an, an analysis in post. Generally, like the further you're behind, the riskier you should play. Agree. Now the Bedos could try a yeah, block or attempt to block the, the city. Akatosh tries to develop uh, at the bottom. Yeah. Would you would would you play it? There are still two. Uh, there are still two caps with uh, yeah, road to oh. left. Would oh, yeah. you play it? I would definitely not play it. And here's the reason. Not play it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would definitely not play it. So first of all, this tile is super valuable. Like tiles with shields, you generally, unless you really really have to, want to use them to build your own cities and to build your own complete cities. Like this, it's it's not a bad move. Um, yeah, or, or but actually, if I were Zebedeus, I would have built it over here just to continue my road mm -hmm. as well, so to get as many yep. points as possible. The second thing is, um, I try to avoid adding points to my opponent's features because even if you manage to get get this block, this city could grow to eight, nine points and could have justified this meeple. And second, yep. um, Zebedeus is ahead, so you generally, if you're ahead, you want to avoid creating high variance situation. And a high variant situation would be, okay, you're helping your opponent, and your opponent draws this tile really soon. So the block becomes ineffective, and you, basically what you've done is you've, gave, you've given your opponent two points, or maybe even four points if this city 
is getting um, completed. Yeah. So the yeah. I think the, the main art of blocking is not just doing blocks with good blocking probabilities, but also knowing when to block and not to block. Like do everything mm -hmm. at the right time at the right tile. Find the balance between point scoring and between blocking. Yeah, agree. Let's see what happens with the big city right there. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's a bit hard to be to be close now. Actually, it's not that bad. Like, you know, um well, let's say if you are Akatosh, let's say if you draw you draw um, something like a triangle with a road there's four mm -hmm. roads left put it over here another triple city put it over here like it's 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 doable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's doable yeah. yeah and you kind of should hope for that if you're mm -hmm. red i mean what else now you do? there is yeah there is the attack from zepatos no what yeah zepatos now i think making another imprecision uh, I mean, you you meeple this, of course, before meeples. Just no mm -hmm. question about it. Um, also, oh, by the way, the reason why why this was a mistake before it kind of doesn't look that bad. You start a road. Uh, first of all, if he were to take the two points over here, mm -hmm. down here, you do so without spending a meeple, and most importantly, you he would have taken away the monastery spot. So Zebedeus yeah. was very lucky that Akatosh didn't use the monastery spot because, as we see. It turned into a complete monastery. Mm -hmm. Like it would have been a twelve-point monastery, nine plus here with tempo. So you get the three points of extra for the for the road. It's um... yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. Now Zabedo should take the city. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is only two, no, one triangle, simple triangle left, and a splitting tile. Yeah. Good enough if you're so, trailing behind. Good enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By the way, I yep. still have to remind that. So we should watch, be watching the game knowing that had Akatosh placed over here, he would have had 12 more points now, which is 36. 36 40. So suddenly it doesn't look that bad. Yeah, so yeah. still chances to equalize. Okay, now here. Uh, okay, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? <laughs> It's difficult to calculate the probabilities. Uh, I think still Zabadels has slightly better chance of not mm -hmm. letting Akatosh to complete, but anything can happen. I guess I'm kind of rooting for Red uh, just so that he, we get a decider game. Okay. And also because I already supported Hungary in the in the Siegfried duel, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's see. Of course, there are higher chances for the Bedos to close first the city and to block the other one, but hmm, interesting. Uh, interesting and also but, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> That's something! Whoa, <laughs> and, uh, and now he <laughs> throws the starting tile. <laughs> like, what kind of acrobatics is that? I mean, like, I, okay, I think I understand the logic behind that move, but the, the but the thing is, like, it just doesn't work mathematically at all. Okay, so the logic was, I think, to to place a city and make sure that he gets compensation if Akatosh like connects to the field, so that Akatosh completes his city. But the reason why this doesn't work at all, well, two reasons. One is this spot was still readily available. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the second reason is, uh, well, this meeple was scoring one point, this meeple was scoring three points, so Akatosh would have yeah. been perfectly happy with this plus two advantage in this, in this mini meeple mini battle. Agree. Now it's a yeah, fortunate uh, draw for Zebedeus, so that was the tile <laughs> well, <yeah>. he expected. <laughs> Although he, he had like he had the probability to do so. But, but playing uh, okay, how? Why would you play the what the heck is that? You mean the lucrative what? meeple yeah. for zero points, yeah? <laughs> And to connect to a field with three points, yeah. which is not taken, and it's yeah, you can easily have a three-point field. At, yeah. 
Uh, interesting. Well, I, I think maybe Zebadero saw that he got the advantage from the city. He's just trying to make it interesting. You know, it would be it would be just. I mean, he, it, winning is not interesting. Maybe trying to lose is a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> he, he's playing uh, on the phone. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> this is also. Yeah. A root cause. I don't <laughs> think he's playing on the phone. No? Um, okay. Because it, it's a thing, like, if you have um, the software, BGA software, open in both the phone and laptop, it says that mm -hmm. you're on the phone. Or if you open it from the phone recently. I think if Vladimir okay. is still watching us, he can, like, explain this bug, because uh, he explained it in one of his streams as well. <clears throat> okay. But anyway, maybe I'm going a little bit too hard on 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 Zebedeus He's, with his creative moves. Maybe it's just like people are also people also get worried. Like I know that um, some of my teammates in a first match against f friends, I think, like lost their games just because they were like a little bit nervous and maybe made some moves that they mm -hmm. normally wouldn't do. And it's also Zebedeus Zebedeus's first championships. Speaking of that, do you know his real name? Um, not uh, right away. I, but it's not the first championship. I uh, I remember Zebedeus also from other championships. Oh, really? So it's not new in the team. It's, oh, this is okay. what I remember. Let me check. So the, he, he's new for me. Uh, I also I wasn't around here at all for the for the last year's European Championships. I didn't mm -hmm. even know about Board Game Arena still existing. I didn't even know that Carcassonne grew that big. Uh, so it's just mm -hmm. in uh, in March. Um, Batal Albotov, also known as Musacello, invited me to the team and then introduced me to this. So I've been. So if uh, they weren't in the World Championships, then probably I wouldn't have seen them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, the pandemic helped a lot to connect the players around the world. So I saw a lot of uh, accounts created last year or yeah, in the last two years. So yeah, it really, true. it really, mm -hmm, it really helped for. For this game, so now a very good throw with uh, four easy points and a monastery. Yeah, with six meeple points back. basically. Mm -hmm. Six points. And yeah, a six points and a meeple back. Yeah, this is quite good. Yeah, so it's definitely, it's probably your screen name at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's game over at this point. That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> just for just I know, for I know, no. I know, but for not not everybody knows. I think because because people are joining us, I think I should be reintroducing you uh, just every once in a while. Yes, I'm here with uh, uh, Bogdan Kurkan, uh, captain of the Romanian team, also known as Game Over on Board Game Arena. Do you have any like particular history behind your screen name? While Zebedeus gets another uh, tile that Akatosh needed? <laughs> uh, not really. So I started uh, as a kid playing video games and uh, having this nick there. But uh, yeah, just for fun, right? If you win, then yeah, it's game over for the others. But of course, <laughs> it's a childish thing and I just kept it. It's um, yeah, no uh, interesting so story behind. Mm -hmm. Now for easy points for, um, yeah, for Akatosh, there were... Actually, it was not the only place I would prefer to do it uh, near the city, maybe. On the left, of to course. Block, yeah, yeah, on the left, yeah, yeah, yeah to, uh, to block the connection system. there. Well, actually, you oh, don't it's... have to block the connection because Zebedeo was miscounted. There's, uh, all eight of them are out, so... Ah, okay, I didn't count it yet, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, Akatosh has some compensation. This 15 points with the field, not going to be enough, and Zebato is going to take down this duel. Um... Speaking of your screen name, though, maybe is there, a, I'm just trying to sort of maybe milk a little bit the story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the fact that like the, the, the slash between game and over is super long, is that like a, is a specific aesthetic reason behind that? Uh, not really. So uh, the nickname with, the, with only one underscore was taken <laughs> when I created the, uh, the account, and I just took the next one. <laughs> and of course, it's more it's more clear and more visible, right? Yeah. 
So, just to conclude, so Zebedeus had a lot of uh, imprecise moves in this game, but nevertheless, he closed the big city, uh, having some monasteries in a row, um, very easy points out there. But you see two farmers on three points, actually, the one on the right points. is uh, with zero points, yeah, <laughs> still. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. With that simple cap, uh, mm -hmm. waiting for the starting tile again. It was an uh, interesting um, yeah, move. Marian just told me that Zebedeus played uh, the, um, yeah, to all championships so far um, for Hungary. So it's not uh, new with this competition. And uh, he also said that Julio won already the, the duel. So it's 2-0 uh, for Julio. Uh, nice. One point for Italy. One point for Italy. Um, okay, so it's going to be 1-1 one, one after this. And shall we go then to Mosapal or shall Let's we see. go back to Zikrid? Let's see how Mosapal. Mosapal is playing. Let me check. What point in time? Oh, finishing the game. Let me check. Uh, fields. Okay. Still no. Blocked. I believe Antonio is. Uh, He's winning this one. Yeah. So let's see, it's quite tight to move at Mosopal and Antonio. So Mosopal won the first one. Antonio seems to, to have a lead here in the second game. But yeah, maybe let's go back to Zebedeus, still one tile. Okay, well, uh, what do you see? Let's let's be precise. Four, I see four points in one place and another place. Um, GG says Akatosh. Mm -hmm. not, not, not sure if he means it. <laughs> <laughs> but like it's, yeah. sometimes, sometimes this happens. Like sometimes you just, you just you, like in Carcassonne, every once in a while you have to accept a loss. Like there's, there, there are maybe things that Akitosh could have done, um, such as me playing this monastery over here. But overall, I don't think that would have been mm -hmm. enough um, in any case. I mean, he, he he put up a fight. He put up a fight. That's like respectable. All right. So just mm -hmm. curious to see the point difference here. Probably going to be the same 20 something, 20 something, yeah. 25. Okay, well, oh, that was. Oh. Uh, all right, all right, all right. So somebody chose to sacrifice the points on the last move. Oh, it was closer than I thought. It's under 20. So it's 19 points. So with this meeple, it would have been only 7 points. Uh, yeah, still not quite enough, but... Um... Mm -hmm. No, it's good. The, the thing is that like, generally Akatosh had the right spirit that he started this big city and tried to go for something big, something high variance. He just uh, didn't get the tiles at the very end, but um, this city, also same thing, could have been finished and, and, and could have been enough... Um, so Agree. it came close. Good fight, good hive. I, I really enjoyed this game actually. I, I also sometimes enjoy the game when, when like opponents make some weird moves and they get to like, do, a mm -hmm. little, do a little bit of banter because of that. <laughs> yeah, agree. Well, what about uh, watching the Mosopal and Antonio? Both were playing in the World Championship this year. Yeah, so maybe. They're, they're yeah, sure. and this the yeah, decisive game there. So decisive, yeah, so it was 1 1. Mm -hmm, oh, and, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's just starting, yeah? Yes. Okay, great. So overall, I think that, like, I've played with both. I'm, I just say that Mosopal is stronger, both mm -hmm. LOIs and just in the understanding of the game. Uh, but it's, 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 it's close. It's like, it's... Yeah. Maybe I would expect, if the two meet, I would expect me, Mosopal to win about, like, 60% of the time. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mosopal, Mosopal. Um, Not started yet, or at least. Yes, they have. But it's, uh, is it? No. 
Yeah, they're they're there. They are there. Okay. Interesting. They have a similar rating. But not yet uh, really started. So uh, I feel, believe Mosopal has to accept the uh, uh, starting of a game. So actually, they are both close in elo and also in percentages of uh, yeah the win rate hmm. in board game arena. So yeah. Oh yeah, it's... percentages of win rate. I, I get that, but I was I was thinking like the percentage of win rate against each other. I'm not sure if they uh, have played I, much. Mm, I didn't check it. Yeah, I didn't check it. Good. So started Mosapal taking the city. Yeah, and and for equal opponents, starting first does give you a significant advantage, mm -hmm. especially with a tile mm -hmm. like this. So, yes. Uh. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting move. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Oh. And I, I have to say, like, also, I I, I want to go strict. I, I'm gonna say it's wrong. Like your meeple stuff, because the thing is, mm -hmm. your opponent. There are many tiles that that your opponent could have drawn that give him a lot of value. Actually, this is one of them. So imagine yep. if if Mosipal had me pilled this, then Antonio would have to put this over here and not get any value for himself. And now Antonio has his nice city for five points, which he will never intend to complete, which means that it's not this monastery meeple that's controlling the city meeple. It's the city meeple that's controlling this monastery meeple. If Mosipal exactly. ever wants his guy back, this means that he will have to add points to Antonio, which is not a good situation to be in. And so it seems that... Okay, well... Hmm. I, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so for, for our okay. viewers, the main thing why, why, do, why placing moves like this is a mistake is at the start of the game and pretty much from, from throughout the game, you definitely do not want to leave empty stuff lying around. Because then, um, if you leave a city cap, then your opponent, in this case Mosapal, is the more is more likely to take it. And this is exactly what happened. Also, Antonio had loads of meeples. Like, why not just spend a meeple? I guess he may have thought that you know maybe um, Mosapal could have blocked, uh, could have connected these cities. But still, it's it's some risk that you just have to accept in order to prevent your opponent from scoring points. So at the moment, um, it seems to me that both players are playing kind of on the conservative side. So thinking, I think, more about not getting their meeples blocked rather than scoring more points. Well, let's see if it works them. All right, now Mosapal goes for something ambitious. So this is moderately mm -hmm. dangerous. He will, well, but he managed to save himself. Yeah. Although he also kind of needs his tile over over here, but at the same time he doesn't need this tile over here because he doesn't want um, uh, Antonio to complete his city. Oh, there's so much st stuff going on. Like this, I really like this position. We have this sort of Mexican standoff. Mm, uh, like, okay, there's this tile, but it's not quite clear who needs it more. So now with this city blocked, Mosopal needs it more because he will be able to remove his monastery meeple, but, but on his last move, it was still too early to play here because there was still a chance that Antonio could complete his city. So, um, lots of stuff, lots of stuff. Multiple now getting more cities and getting more advantages. Now he's going to connect to the field, and now he has one, two, three tiles remaining to place over here, and now he gets it, but he had an 88% chance of getting it anywhere, but, even, uh, but he gets a little bit lucky because he gets it a little bit earlier, and it's a substantial lead for Mosapal. He can still take this field meeple off. Um, yeah, so much things going on. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what's your opinion on the position, Bogdan? Yeah, so Mosopal had uh, some lucky <laughs> draws in the last tile, so he also has two monasteries, good, uh, good placed, let's say. Also, field is equal, so I would say that he has an advantage. Also, Meeple uh, in hand. Um, yeah, I, I believe it's uh, it's a better position for Mosopal. He tries now to, yeah, it's a good move. Also trying to attack at the next move, the city, and also uh, placing another meeple. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely, so it's a multi-purpose move. It's a good thing. But there's mm -hmm. one move that I liked more. I think I would have placed it next to my monastery just to prevent uh, yeah. Antonio from completing the city with a field meeple. First of all, block, yeah. then attack on the next move. Yeah, agree with that. 
because I was just about to say that it's almost it's almost a critical moment over here. If Antonio managed to complete a city and throw a field meeple, then uh, he'd have a fighting chance. Now it looks like it's something very, very difficult to come back from. Although, eight points over here, field meeple over here, things mm -hmm. can happen, things can happen. Yeah, agree. Okay. And here you go, you have the curve, and uh, yeah, he will connect with the field. It, yeah, it should be like that, I believe. Probably. Is there anything better? I don't think there is. Maybe at attacking the city, yeah, mm -hmm, that one. Yeah, And yeah, preventing yeah. the field meeple, yeah. But anyway, oh, oh, interesting. I would have chosen the, the first option. I see what I kind of like that. The thing is, there's still options to connect, and now that Mosopal completes the city, there's going to be another option to connect. Oh, sorry, that wasn't Mosopal, that was Antonio. Mm -hmm. I think what he's thinking is that there are some scenarios. For example, if Antonio draws this tile, how you can also mm -hmm. connect from this side. So you mm -hmm. figure that this wasn't that critical. While this was pretty important, because now if Antonio managed to draw this, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a huge advantage for Antonio. Yeah, I w I would have to say that Mosopal is pretty good at prioritizing over here in this game. Also, we have to remember that the field is not huge yet, so it's not like mm -hmm. game defining thing. Okay, Mosopal goes over here, right? Do I? Is there anything else? No. And of course, on uh, one monastery, it's a good one, right? Yeah, it's uh, seven still points. One. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. seven points, and still possible to complete. Yeah, agree. Yeah, oh, it's now, it's now very hard to be Antonio in this position, and now you can block. Yeah, most of all, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter that these are two meeples. Um, you kind of don't want no. Antonio to finish. It. Let. Oof. Why? I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting play. So. He's ahead, he has two monasteries, pretty well developed. I would have blocked, he has meeples in hand anyway. Absolutely, yeah. Like, it's the thing is that you are so much ahead, you don't want to create these um, big variant things. Because the thing is, um, Antonio, if he draws one of the remaining city caps, like this, for example, mm -hmm. there's loads of those. There's a, one mm -hmm. of the dividers and one of the other kinds of dividers. Um, he both blocks two guys because yeah. these are out. And he can even throw a field meeple. It's just a um, super risky move on the part of Mosopal. I think he could have just sealed the game over here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you would throw a uh, field meeple right there if no. uh, you would have close. Mm. I would have I taken four points. like Because being yeah. in the lead, it's just... Uh, mm -hmm. The thing is also, while when you're creating a field fight while being ahead, you're just increasing the stakes, right? You're, you're drawing mm -hmm. the field, and you're giving your opponent some chances. Oh, great, now Antonio blocks. So, mm -hmm. if at the yeah. start I liked Mosopal's moves a little bit more, Antonio's more maybe like a little bit too shy, less ambitious, and mm -hmm. uh, Mosopal managed to take advantage of everything, and uh, now I kind of like more what Antonio is doing, because while maybe what Mosopal's doing, like it's not a particularly bad move, you know, to do this. Actually, he managed to <laughs> get some something yeah. really good out of it. It's really a six-point field. But it it's wasn't necessary and, and, um, completely, and it's not something that's in the spirit of the position, in the spirit of the strategy that you got to do. Because the task of Mosopal is to ensure a 100% win probability at this point. It's like very, very close to 100. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. Good so, yeah. throw here. There we go. And Antonio Whoa, completes the city. There we yeah. go. And I think he deserved that. Like, I, I think it's really fair. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, you, you get greedy with the, the two points. This is what you get. This and you mm -hmm. have to take mm, You have to take a six-point road with four meeples until yes. the end. Again, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Antonio with the conservatism. Uh, it's, um, he, he, he's just not going to end up spending his meeple. Mm -hmm. He's going to end up tying the field, though. Uh Although these two monasteries will end up winning most of all the game. One of these monasteries is offset by this city, but, well, yeah. 
um, so the one is still alive and there is never forget that plus 20 um, points on the scoreboard yeah so the field is not enough even if they fight for it to the end yeah so most of us should just uh, hmm yeah, well, this is one of the things, like, it move doesn't make any sense. Okay, so you see, so you're ready to spend uh, a meeple on a six-point field with no potential of developing, but you're not ready to spend a meeple on a six-point road with a potential of developing. Mm hmm But if you take that field and your opponent doesn't take it, it's a difference of 12 points, right? So it's six points for you and not for uh, yeah, the opponent. Oh, that's true. Of course, it's a thing that you have. Exactly, yeah, you have yeah. the meeple in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, mm, interesting choice. Uh, did you see it? So he drew the the cap, and uh, yeah, one option would be that he connects the the farmer, the field meeple, yeah. giving back the meeple to Antonio. Yeah, but it's more secure, I believe, to yeah, more safe. Well, like like this. On, it, it depends on also what kind of tiles they're meeting because they are like mm -hmm. they are probably some scenarios how Antonio connects here and Mosopol doesn't. Doesn't yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Generally, go for <laughs> go for safer. Like if you're Antonio, what do you do? I guess you connect or mm -hmm. I think you this connect. Was... Yeah. yeah, this was my intention anyway. So I will connect and wait maybe to block Mosopal, maybe have have luck. Yeah. Exactly. So what's the win path for Antonio? You connect. Uh, okay, so like the ideal scenario, you connect, you draw a city over here, um, mm -hmm. you try to connect. On the next move, you, you draw this and you take a seven-point road. Maybe mm -hmm. that could somehow win him the game. Then yeah. he would have uh, an... Um, 15, 15 and plus yeah. mm -hmm. 15 and yeah. uh, and 6 yeah 21 mhm mm mhm mm. mm. yeah but again that's something that he could have done with a previous tile not yeah. with a previous tile but with finishing this city ah uh. mm. what's that maybe i <laughs> trying to reach that city and uh, grab it for his field. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's actually pretty nice. Uh, I really like these moves. Remember how uh, I talked about in Ludicelis' game about kind of eating up a big city when you have an enclosed city sort of can just make your way to the tile that's already elsewhere in the field. The same things works for field as well. Like when there's not much to do, you can try to eat up one of those cities. <laughs> mm. It just used to look quite yep. nice what it, you managed to ha to happen. Mm -hmm, exactly. In the meantime, yeah, Antonio put the last meeple and attacking the field from uh, from the top. Yeah. But he recognized the the loss. I know. GG already. Oh, so Antonio maybe just demoralized and uh, yeah. blocked himself. <laughs> okay. Mm hmm. Okay. Interesting move. Yeah. I still, I, I don't, like, even if I lose, I don't do that. I play until the end. Mm hmm. I don't get it right now. No, I think it's just pure psychological. It? Like, uh, also played this mm -hmm. quickly. It's. Mm hmm. So, you know, Antonio says GG, but it probably means something else. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, yeah, most of all, if the monastery secures that, but uh, I don't think it's the, the tile is that um, it's in the game anymore. Oh, okay. Well, he connects there. But still, you know, he could mm -hmm. have hoped that the monastery would, wouldn't be his. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So, I don't know. Oh, so it's only 18 points. So it does look to me mm -hmm. that Antonio may have had a path to victory there with the right run out of tiles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the field, yes. So the field was uh, worth 18 points. Ex yeah. If you would have connected yeah, without the monastery, of course. Okay. 
I don't know. I, I think Good. there was a run out. Like, there was a run out. Anyway, congratulations to Melissa Paul. Uh, I between the other ones, I, I guess I guess well deserved. So at some point, uh, I, I I kind of liked his sort of more ambitious play at the start, and that's what got him all the points. Of course, he also needed some lucky tiles as well. But um, yeah, overall overall good job, good job getting this advantage. Yeah. Then now trying to go for some extra extravagance over here, but. You know, worked out <laughs> pretty well um, in the end for him. But by the way, because the fact that, that Antonio had this path to victory, maybe, at the end. By the way, also, with with two minutes remaining, I would definitely have thought more. Like, even if it's a 10% probability, 5% probability, I can find it and still, and still go for it. So I'm not sure why both players didn't really use their time. So, but this stuff actually mm -hmm. turned out to be a little bit dangerous. So Mosopal did increase the stakes, and this field could have been decisive. Um, but well, something to think about for post-game analysis, but thanks for both players for a quick, entertaining uh, big field fights. So how is our overall duel situation going? So Siegfried won 2-0, and the Jack uh, won again 2-0. I believe it's three against two for Hungary. Zabedos won, right? In the Akatosh. Yeah. So Siegfried won and also Mosopal. And right? Julio the won. Jack, Julio and the Jack. So it's 3 2 for uh, Hungary. Oh, Hungary. so we now watch the decider for everything. Mm hmm. Seems so. Nice. Okay, we picked the right games to watch. I'm I'm happy with this. So we, we watched the newcomers, we watched <laughs> the. And we watched the top two like Hungarian players as well. And yep. yeah. Okay, congrats, Hungary, with a well-deserved victory. Um, was, I guess, I think, yeah, the LO favorite one in on every table. Uh, I guess this one was very mm -hmm. close uh, rating-wise, but uh, Mosopal was like slightly higher, so it still counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agree. Yeah. So and... the favorite, uh, yeah, the favorite player just won the games. Anyway, tight. Interesting game. Tight, tight. And of course, my prognosis about 3-2 in somebody's favor <laughs> turned out to be correct. And, uh, you know, how else exactly. could it be with these two teams? Awesome. Very entertaining carcass on tonight. Um, all right. Maybe let's just talk for a couple of minutes. I'm going to wrap this up. If anybody in the chat has questions about anything, because I see we have a lot of viewers today. Definitely more than ever, by the way, on this channel. So there's 150 people. That's awesome. And 20, and 20 is still with us right now. So it's like 120 viewers uh, total joining us throughout the stream, which also the longest in this channel as well. So thanks very much for sticking around. If you have any question to to our guest, who, by the way, is um, the captain of Romanian team uh, Bogdan Kurkan, also known as Game Over, then please shoot them within the next couple of minutes. But other than that, uh, Bogdan, what was your impression of the matches overall today? Yeah, so I saw some very interesting games, very tight games. So I see a um, very, very good level of Carcassonne uh, played online. Uh, of course, some strange moves <laughs> <laughs> uh, from where we can learn something. And uh, yeah, it was a long but interesting night uh, in the Carcassonne world, let's say. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So did I. Uh, three matches also. You've been with me for three hours because we started a little bit early for like some check technical checkup mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Yeah, would love to would love to have you back at some point uh, for some more streams. Perfect. I would be more than glad. Just yeah, come back to me and we can we can do it again. All right. Then um, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Yeah. Have a nice evening, everybody. Bye. Before we leave, though, um, I oh. have to say, no, no it's, I just forgot to do the usual stuff um, because there will be a lot of new viewers today for our channel. I just wanted to say that we here, we not only do streams of the Carcassonne games, but also do a lot of um, video analyses and Carcassonne puzzles and just general carcass, competitive Carcassonne related content that's not just game streams. So uh, feel free to join um, uh, the channel and check out what's happening there. Definitely some game analysis videos coming up in the next couple of days. All right, just had to plug this in. And now for real, we're ending the stream. Thank you very much, for Bogdan, for joining me. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Now, bye, for real. 
Bye.